get Europa League football either. So it is all to play for. Manchester United in change kit. It is white shirts, uh, red shorts and white socks and Galatasaray in those familiar colours. It's sort of red and orange half and half shirts. I've always thought of them as sort of red and gold like the, uh, the Gryffindor colours if you know the Harry Potter books uh, and films. The stadium's absolutely awash with red and gold. And the pitch is OK after incredible rainfall throughout the day. I'm not exaggerating that, am I, Stephen? No. Honestly, it has been torrential all day, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, our hotel's almost on a hill and the water that's been pouring down the hill. We went out for a walk, shoes were completely covered straight away. And you can just imagine how much rain this pitch has sort of delivered and the pitch has taken today. So the game goes ahead and credit to the ground staff here because that's a magnificent job. You can listen to our commentary this evening alongside the final score graphics and the video printer. Go to the BBC iPlayer or the BBC Sport app and click on Five Live Final Score. Noise building inside the stadium, now known as Rams Park. We're at the Ali Sami Yen Sports Complex uh, in Istanbul, the most populous city uh, in Europe. Something like 17 million people live in this city and it sounds like most of them are inside this stadium tonight immediately as the game kicks off and we have Tangi and Dombele down on the floor after an aerial challenge for the ball with Scott McTominay every single fan in a Galatasaray shirt are singing their hearts out and bouncing up and down and it looks like the entire stadium uh, is moving we are underway in the Champions League Galatasaray against Manchester United. I'll give you the team news in just a second. Dries Mertens tackled by Sofiane Amrabat and Manchester United clear their line. Some early pressure uh, for them to deal with. The Turkish international uh, Abdul Krim Bardakja at centre-back gets on the ball just inside the Manchester United half. Makes a strong run forward down the inside left channel. Doesn't see anything doing there, so decides to play back. Uh, towards the halfway line. His fellow centre-back, fellow Turkish international, Khan Ayhan, gets on the ball. Those two exchange passes. The goalkeeper, I think you'll probably have heard of, he's in his 13th season at Galatasaray. The Uruguayan international, Fernando Muslera, all in green away to our left-hand side. Your Manchester United team tonight, and it's the first time they've touched the ball, which is why you can hear that incredible crescendo of booing and whistling, throwing down the right, flicked on by Hoyland, collected by Scott McTominay. McTominay takes the ball deep into Galatasaray territory, plays it back to Anthony, who's got a clever little drag back. He's half-tackled, but he's still going, Anthony. Edge of the penalty area, looking to find Hoyland, who can't turn on the edge of the box, and Galatasaray will bring it away and up towards the halfway line. There's Zaha's first touch of the evening. Nice ball through the middle for Icardi. Icardi has support from Ziyech. Step over from Ziyech, shot is blocked, and it goes behind for a Galatasaray corner, Stephen Warner. Yeah, two minutes on the clock and a great start to the game. Lovely run forward by McTominay. Great work from Anthony down the left-hand side. Galatasaray then break it up and then straight down the other end. Lovely little step overs from Wolf Sahar, frees Icardi, and Ziyech gets a shot away which is blocked but that's how the game's going to go ahead this is going to be fantastic you cannot hear yourself think inside this stadium Galatasaray nil Manchester United nil corner for Galatasaray attacking the goal away to our right flicked on at the near post high over the crossbar that was Lucas Torreira former Arsenal man who got his head on it and so Manchester United have a goal kick they have Andre Anana in goal Aaron wan Bissaka in at right-back this evening. Luke Shaw back from injury. Makes his second start in a row at left-back. Maguire and Lindelof, the two centre-backs. They take the goal kick short. Anana all in black. Drills the ball right down the middle of the pitch. Bardakcha, a bit sloppy there, chested it down. And very nearly lost it to Anthony. Anthony tried to lay it off to Hoyland. And they weren't quite on the same wavelength. And so the ball comes to Ziyech wide on the right-hand side. And Galatasaray keep possession and come back to their goalkeeper. Scott McTominay is partnered by Sofiane Amrabat in central midfield. So Kobe Mainu is on the bench this evening. Anthony Bruno Fernandes, the skipper. Alejandro Garnacho, scorer of that wonder goal at Goodison Park on Sunday. And Rasmus Hoyland fit again and starting through the middle. Zaha on the ball for Galatasaray. To Dries Mertens, dipping shot. Anana has it easily covered, throws himself to his left and makes the save. Yeah, they got a little bit of a problem down that left-hand side. United's right, where... Zaha wonders inside and the, the width is given by the fullback and it causes Wan-Bissaka a problem. 
And Dries Mertens picks it up and gets a shot. That's too easy for Manchester United to concede those opportunities early on in the game. George Cummings, our producer, has just been picking out some of the flags in and around the stadium. I can see that one, which is written in a sort of horror Halloween type way, all in block red capitals with like blood dripping off the letters. Your nightmare is back again, it says, as Manchester United attack down the left-hand side. Garnaccio at speed into the box. Cross comes in, there's a chance, and it ends up just going wide. Hoyland was tumbling forward, sort of got a back heel on the ball. It spun up over his head and very nearly crept in at the near post. It goes behind for a Galatasaray goal kick. Outstanding from Garnaccio. What they've been in Manchester United when they have had the opportunity to go forward is they've been direct, they've taken people on. Really good play by Garnaccio as he gets to the byline, pulls it back with his left foot. And you have to say the tackle that comes in on Rasmus Hoyland is an ex it's a really good strong challenge from Bardaccio. Yeah, great challenge from the defender with the long hair tied back in the little ponytail, the bearded chin. Ball is played back to the goalkeeper Fernando Muslera. So Muslera in goal. Uh, Sasha Bowie, young French right back. Angelino once of Manchester City at left back. Bardaccio and Ihan, the two Turkish internationals at centre-back. Tangi Undombele is on loan from Tottenham. Uh, he's alongside Lucas Torreira in central midfield. So former Tottenham man and Arsenal man combining. Manchester United with defending to do again. They're appealing for a goal kick. Galatasaray won a corner. Manchester United get the decision. Cue the whistles. Ziyech, Mertens, Zaha and Mauro Icardi, the Argentine up top who has 16 goals in 21 appearances for Galatasaray this season, having scored 22 in 24 last season. Scored the winner at Old Trafford in this group, of course. That is a phenomenal goal-scoring record. There's some real quality and some real experience in this Galatasaray team. And, they, you know, we're looking at it, Stephen, from a Manchester United point of view, looking at it from the English teams in the Champions League point of view. Manchester United desperate to qualify. Galatasaray will be absolutely desperate to get through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. Well, they will, because of the, the route they've taken as well. They've had to qualify to get through to this stage. Good pressure by Galatasaray. Well played, Amrabat, because that's what you're going to have to do in this game. Take people, take the pressure off the ball, on the ball, want the ball and play in this atmosphere. That is very intimidating. Stephen Warnock with us then here at the Rams Park in Istanbul. Five Live, BBC Sounds, BBC Radio, Manchester. Galatasaray nil, Manchester United nil. Wambasaka's throw, clipped forward on the half volley by Maguire, headed to his right by Hoyland. Anthony battles for it. Bardaccio clears in a hurry and it goes out for a throw-in to Manchester United. wan then gets the start at right-back tonight, plays it back to Maguire. Maguire wants a 1-2. He's nearly tackled. United have lost it. Maguire makes a block. Anthony gets away down the right. Angelino's in his wake. Here's Anthony with the ball at his feet. Sweeps the pass to Bruno Fernandes. Slight miscontrol from Fernandes. He had Garnacho in space on the left-hand side, but he couldn't get the ball to him. Luke Shaw goes racing back to make a tackle and Galatasaray get the throw. Well, so often this season, Anthony's been questioned about going backwards too often when he gets the ball and playing too safe. He goes to play the ball back in and faints and takes on the left-back Angelino and he just leaves him for dead. Bruno Fernandes just with a heavy touch and the Manchester United attack comes to, comes to an end, but it's been a good start from Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes wins a free kick, he lost the ball, he then looked at the referee as if to say that must be a free kick, and the referee almost seemed to make the decision on the imploring of Bruno Fernandes. Jose Maria Sanchez, our Spanish referee tonight, the man we don't really want to be mentioning too much, is the video assistant referee, uh, fellow Spaniard Ricardo de Burgos, after uh, Newcastle's travails with the video assistant referee in the Champions League in Paris last night. Maguire's headed down from the free kick. McTominay lays it back here to Amrabat. Amrabat is forced back towards the halfway line. Shaw, low left-footed ball out to Garnacho, who let it run past him. Wasn't quite aware of the geography of the pitch because then the ball ran over the touchline and it's gone out for a throw-in. But, I mean, so far, these Galatasaray fans, eight minutes in, it's not just booing the first couple of minutes of Manchester United possession. Every time a Manchester United player gets on the ball, even to pick it up for a throw-in, the boos and the whistles starts, and they are an incredible volume. Uh, here's Garnacho again, on the left, shoulder to shoulder with Sasha Bowie. I think he's fouled Bowie. Yes, Galatasaray 
get the free kick. Good physical battle between the winger and the fullback. They take it quickly back to the goalkeeper, Muslera. Uh, out it goes wide. Ball is drilled from Angelino's left boot all the way across to Ward Ziet on the right. He couldn't keep it in. Pitch looks to be playing absolutely fine, Stephen. Actually. Yeah, it does. There's just a few times when that ball comes in, it's going to take a skid off it. It'll speed the, the pass up. And as that ball was hit outside to this right-hand side to Ziyech, he, he almost anticipated it taking a, a slower bounce. It's not going to happen today. It's going to have that zip on it. Luke Shaw's throw does get a bit of zip as it bounces inside the Galatasaray half. Torreira heads it to Bowie. Back it comes to the goalkeeper, Muslera. Muslera. Low side-footed pass to Bardakja. Bardakja just stops and waits to see if Rasmus Hoyland is going to close him down. He's not, so Muslera steps forward in between the centre-backs and drills a pass out to Bowie on the right. Little Lucas Torreira with the uh, peroxide blonde hair. Number 34 on his back. Bright red numbers on the back of these Galatasaray shirts. Left half of the shirt is bright red and the right half of the shirt is bright orange. White shorts, orange socks with the red tops. Long ball over the top from Ihan. Zaha chases, ball gets away from him into the arms of Andre Anana. Bowls it out to Lindelof. Lindelof looking for Luke Shaw. Shaw plays back to Amrabat. He's on the edge of his own penalty area to Anana. Anana had to get that away quickly with his left foot. McTominay does well. Chests it down under pressure from Ndombele in midfield. Holds him off and plays the pass to Anthony. Then goes for the return pass. Here's McTominay on the right-hand side. Ndombele's followed him all the way back. Anthony has it about 25 yards from goal in the inside right channel to Fernandez. Fernandez turns edge of the box. Hoyland's trying to hold it off. Lay it back to Fernandez. Garnacho with a chance. One touch. Oh, what a goal! Garnacho does it again. He did it at Goodison Park on Sunday. And now he's silenced the Galatasaray fans, sort of, here in Istanbul. He fires the shot high into the roof of the net. And it's Galatasaray nil, Manchester United won. Well, this all comes from Scott McTominay. He keeps a high position as Anana plays out. He receives the ball on the back of Ndombele, and then he drives Manchester United forward. Ball out to Anthony on the right-hand side, and Bruno Fernandes picks up just the perfect position in the centre of midfield, and no-one tracks him. He draws the challenge in, and just as they think they can nick the ball, he toe-pokes it into the, into the path of Garnacho, and then Garnacho unleashes a left-foot shot into the roof of the net. Quite brilliant from Garnacho and Manchester United, and they take the lead after 11 minutes. Things are starting to boil over a little bit early on. Fernando Muslera, the Galatasaray goalkeeper, the Uruguayan, thinks that Garnacho has slightly over-celebrated the goal and has taunted Galatasaray fans. He's come racing off his line to try and confront Garnacho. He's been pushed away by the referee. I saw the Manchester United players go over and celebrate. It was in front of Galatasaray fans. They're sort of holding fingers to their ears, telling them to calm down and quieten down. There were a few things thrown as well. The Manchester United players ignored that. And Bruno Fernandes, I saw very calmly, just picking implements up off the pitch and putting them behind the dead ball line. But I think the referee very sensibly here, Stephen, because it's an absolute powder keg of an atmosphere. He's just trying to calm Garnacho down. He's having a word with Bruno Fernandes. He's had a word with Fernando Muslera. He doesn't want it to get out of hand. No, he doesn't. But Garnacho is entitled to in celebrate the goal. What you don't want to do is entice the crowd. But, I mean, what a goal from Manchester United. That is the perfect start from them. They've been dangerous on the break, and credit to them. Picked the pass at the right time and found those gaps in the uh, Galatasaray defence. Oh, Garnacho's up for it, into a challenge on Bowie. Caught by Bowie, fouled. Garnacho rolling around inside his own half in a bit of pain but Bruno Fernandes the skipper comes over and says thank you very much good job for the team and we'll take the free kick this is Manchester United's fourth visit to Istanbul to play Galatasaray and before tonight they had never managed to score a goal a couple of nil-nil draws and a one-nil defeat Alejandro Garnacho the 19 year old has scored Manchester United's first ever goal away to Galatasaray in European competition Bowie chasing a ball for Galatasaray down the right. Two Manchester United players in with the challenge. Amrabat slides in. Garnacho uses his shoulder and it goes behind for the Galatasaray corner. I'm not so sure Amrabat needs to make that challenge. I think the ball's going out for a goal kick and he, he throws himself into it and he actually hurts himself because just off the pitch there's almost like an astroturf and he just stopped on that and he's hurt himself now. 
Dries Mertens then with the corner for Galatasaray. It goes skidding through the Manchester United penalty area. Lobbed up in the air by Anthony. Nodded down by Ziyech. Mertens might just keep this in. Tries a low ball down the byline from the right. That's blocked by Bruno Fernandes and goes behind for another Galatasaray corner. 14 minutes played in Istanbul. Galatasaray nil, Manchester United won. So as it stands at the moment, Manchester United move to second in the group. Merton's corner, flicked header, blocked on the line twice. Anana got his body to the first one, another block on the goal line. Galatasaray appealing for a handball, and the referee waves those claims away. And somehow, Manchester United's goal survives. Referee being surrounded by Galatasaray players now. Stephen Warner will have a look at the replay for you here, because the ball was pinging around like in a pinball machine. We've got one of the Galatasaray players down injured in the six-yard box as well. That's Lucas Torreira. They're out they should have had a penalty. Yeah, well, firstly, great save from Anana from a flick by Mertens, and that is a superb stop. I think it's McTominay or Lindelof. I can't quite see on the pictures, but as it just flicks up, it's McTominay. It hits his, it hits his arm, but it's the upper arm of the sleeve. That is not a penalty in my eyes. Referee is just holding play at the moment. Galatasaray do have a corner. He's telling the Galatasaray players to go away. It was Lucas Torreira's little header at the near post that was brilliantly saved by Andre Anana and the video assistant referee the check is over it's just gone up on the big screen no penalty well called by Stephen Warnock Scott McTominay's arm hanging by his left hand side it definitely struck his upper arm I mean when you see the handballs given like they were last night Stephen we were scratching our heads at that one you just never know I think anymore but they've decided that was not a penalty no correct decision and that is not what we want to see we don't want the wrong decisions like last night this is this is a game that's already exciting we don't need VAR into being in this game so 15 minutes played Hope you're enjoying it, everyone. Five Live, BBC Sounds, BBC Radio, Manchester, Galatasaray nil, Manchester United won. Our second Champions League commentary uh, on Five Live tonight. Arsenal against Lens from the Emirates Stadium. Ian Dennis and Chris Sutton, your commentary team for that one. A point will take Arsenal through to the knockout stages. A win wins them the group. Merton's free kick, flicked on on the edge of the box. Anana, that's an easy catch for him as he tumbles forward on the edge of his six-yard box and just decides to slow everything down, just walks with the ball in his big white glove to the edge of his penalty area, gets jeered as he does so, hits a terrible goal kick, which bounces near Icardi, Anana comes out, saves at Icardi's feet, and Manchester United very nearly cost themselves there. Oh, he's a lucky, lucky man, Anana, because he tries that sidewinder, he tries to drill it through the middle, he gets it horribly wrong, Mertens intercepts it into Icardi, and he ju he's alert to the situation, but that is very, very lucky from Anana. Anana plays a low ball now out to Lindelof in the left-back position, tries to scoop it down the line to Shaw, it's blocked by Ziyech and goes out for a throw-in to Manchester United. Ten yards short of the halfway line, Alejandro Garnacho's thumping left-footed finish sees them in front against Galatasaray. The other game in this group later on tonight, Bayern Munich at home to Copenhagen, Bayern having already won the group and they are Manchester United's final opponents in a couple of weeks time at Old Trafford Bruno Fernandes flicks the ball over his shoulder with his right boot Garnacho chases it's well covered by Ihan. Ihan thumps it up into the air and out for a Manchester United throw the soundtrack to the game is is incredible and a bit like when Garnacho scored the goal I've been in stadiums around the world where that happens where you know suddenly 50,000 people just go silent it's weird you think what's happened there yeah, but they, they realised very quickly, didn't they? Bruno Fernandes, driving shot, oh, oh my oh. word! Fernandes, it's a rocket into the top corner. He can barely believe it himself. Manchester United, two goals up in 17 minutes, and you don't hit them much better than that. An absolute corker from Manchester United's captain, Galatasaray nil, Manchester United two. Wow. Simply wow, what a strike by Bruno Fernandes. Picks the ball up, unopposed in midfield, gets a strike away with his right foot into the top corner of the left uh, of the goal. That is magnificent from Bruno Fernandes. But credit to Bruno Fernandes and McTominay. They're playing high. They're allowing Amrabat to sit deep. They want to be advanced of the midfielders. And two or three times they pick that ball up and they've advanced. But then it's about the quality on the ball. What can you do with it then? Bruno Fernandes is afforded space and time. And he just unleashes an absolute thunderbolt into the top corner. 
I think people who've been watching their Manchester United football this season and listening to it as well will know that a 2-0 lead in a Champions League game doesn't necessarily mean it's done and dusted. We know that. So far, the two away games in the Champions League have meant 4-3 defeats. Manchester United lost to Galatasaray 3-2 at home and took the lead twice in that game. But both of those strikes from Garnacho and Bruno Fernandes unstoppable of the highest quality yeah and that, that's what you need in games like this is that your big t your big players step up to the mark and say okay this is the atmosphere I want to play and this is where I want to showcase my abilities and the, both players have stepped up to the plate straight away wanting the ball under pressure uh, Bruno Fernandes late with the challenge there. Referee's going to play advantage inside the Manchester United half. Icardi lays it back to Ziyech. He's tackled. Hoyland comes back to try and win a header. Ball comes off Ziyech's knee. Bruno Fernandes chases this inside the Manchester United half. Low ball up to Anthony. Lays it back to Fernandes. Not quite enough on it, which allowed Angelino to make the challenge. And the ball's gone out for a Galatasaray throw. So, uh, 20... Very loud, very frenetic, very exciting minutes of football in Istanbul. See Manchester United leading Galatasaray by two goals to nil. The only win in the group so far for Manchester United at home against Copenhagen. That was 1-0 and that relied on a late Andre Anana penalty save uh, as well. Ziyech turning the ball round to Lucas Torreira. Pressure coming certainly for Manchester United to deal with. Undombele up to Ziyech. Ziyech trying to wriggle his way through on the edge of the box. Manchester United scramble it away. Mertens cross to the far post. Anana just sort of glides a glove onto it, scrapes off the knuckles, and it goes away to the right. And Anthony, with some really good skill, gets out of a tight spot in the right back position. Then he was away down the right. Sliding challenge on him by Torreira. Referee wants to play the advantage, then he can't. Torreira's claiming he didn't catch Anthony, but I think if Anthony hadn't hurdled the challenge, he definitely would have been caught by Lucas Torreira. 20 minutes of the game gone. Best performance I've seen from Anthony in a Manchester United shirt already. Everything he's done, taking the, taking the uh, defender on, making sure that he's running him the other way. Really good play from Anthony, draws the foul. And that's what you want to see from your wingers, especially away from home. He was hurtling along that right wing as quickly as our taxi driver was hurtling along the... <laughs> The flooded streets of Istanbul. He, he did an unbelievable job in getting us to this game this evening. He, he accepted it as a challenge. There was traffic jams everywhere. It was shortcuts. It was risky little darting here and there. Music absolutely ramped up to the highest volume. Took a great pride. In it. He was actually enjoying the challenge, wasn't he, Stephen, of getting us to the stadium? He was because... Uh... Our producer, George Cummins, kept on giving him tasks and can you get us a little bit closer? Can yeah. you push us a little bit closer? The only thing was, George didn't want to give him a tip at the end, which I thought <laughs> was a bit poor. Bruno Fernandes, first time ball, high into the Galatasaray half. Anthony chases that, he won't get there in time. Fernando Muslera comes out to the edge of the penalty area and collects for Galatasaray. And occasionally it's just a little quieter, just occasionally at times in this game. Now it builds again. The noise around the four sides of the ground as Galatasaray start to build up play inside their own half. Torreira, low pass to Bardakcha. Bardakcha is running diagonally from right to left inside the Manchester United half. Dries Mertens, the incredibly experienced uh, Belgian. Napoli's top scorer in their history, now playing his club football in Turkey. Where's the number 10 shirt? The ball's come out to Bowie on the right-hand side. Here's Ziyech. Ziyech opens his body up and lays it back to Ndombele to Mertens, back to Ndombele again. Manchester United just trying to keep Galatasaray at arm's length. Bowie's cross into the penalty area. Oh, Amrabat scuffs the clearance, gets lucky. The ball went behind him, just loops up into the arms of Inanna. Yeah, it was lucky, but it was really good positional sense from Amrabat because what you have to do when you're in that role is you've got to be screening your centre-backs. And if he hadn't have been there, the ball's going into Icardi and Icardi's either getting a shot away or getting a set for a shot from someone else. So good play from Amrabat. Good strength from Bardakja, holds off Hoyland as he wins the header. Bardakja brings it forward. McTominay comes in to make the challenge. Bardakja just drags the ball back, plays it to Torreira. Cross it comes now to Ihan. Bardakja gets his head up, then hits the cross into the Manchester United penalty area. It's over hit, it's beyond Mertens. He looks frustrated, and the ball goes behind for a goal kick. You just wonder if Manchester United are almost in that sort of stick or twist situation now. What do we do? Do we do we invite Galatasaray onto us and try and counter-attack them? Or do we go for a third and put this game to bed? 
you just look like they've sat back a little bit and they're just in inviting that pressure at the moment. Banana's clearance with his left foot. Garnacho watches it sail over his head and the ball goes out for a throw to Galatasaray just inside their own half. I think the rain has eventually stopped and that's just mist you can see sort of swirling around up above the stadium around the floodlights. Ihan plays the ball across his own half to Bardakcha. Bardakcha floated pass to the left. Angelino brings it under control, plays it in field. Zaha in the inside left position. Torreira actually takes it off him and plays it to Mertens. Mertens followed by Amrabat. Low pass to his left. Little one-two with Angelino. Mertens, little dancing figure. Ball into the feet of Zaha. Tries to turn edge of the box. Icardi. Icardi's layoff, not good. First sign of dissension from the Galatasaray fans towards one of their own players. Hoyland definitely tripped there by Angelino. Free kick for Manchester United inside their own half. Uh, you could just sense it when uh, Icardi gave the ball away. That frustration from the crowd. They're feeling it tonight. They know that this Manchester United team have come here. They're putting pressure on Galatasaray when they're on the ball. And they're also causing them problems going the other way. So free kick for United. Harry Maguire in his yellow boots, taking his time, won't be rushed, chips it forward. Anthony controls and rolls it back to Wan-Bissaka. Wan-Bissaka to Anthony, he's got his back to goal on the halfway line, plays back to Maguire. Maguire, nice ball along the deck to Wan-Bissaka. He's having to battle hard with Zaha for that ball, but he's won it. Two former Crystal Palace men, of course. Outside of the right boot pass from Wan-Bissaka up to Hoyland. Anthony couldn't keep the pass back to him. Angelino clears. Uh, Icardi's header misdirected, he thought he was fouled as he jumped, Bruno Fernandes finds Luke Shaw, Luke Shaw running forward, flicks a little ball into the path of Hoyland, Angle's difficult, cuts oh. it back, what a chance for Luke Shaw who continued his run, couldn't control it, eight yards out, and the goal at his mercy, it's eventually gone behind for the Manchester United corner. As Luke Shaw runs down the left-hand side and feeds the ball into Hoyland, I don't think he thinks that Hoyland can get it back to him, and he just bounces the ball into him and almost bounces it into the ground to lift it above the defender's leg and Luke Shaw wasn't expecting it because that was a golden opportunity six yards out in front of goal to get a strike on goal. Galatasaray nil, Manchester United two. 20 minutes remaining in the first half. Throw in, not corner, I beg your pardon. Taken by Manchester United, they've lost it. Ball is cleared by Galatasaray but it's an easy one for Harry Maguire just to uh, get onto inside his own half. Passes back to Anana, out it comes to Lindelof, quickly gets support from Amrabat. Amrabat, arms pumping, running hard inside the Manchester United half. Plays across to Wan-Bissaka, McTominay made a really good run down the inside right channel there and wasn't seen. Wan-Bissaka and Anthony exchange passes, comes back to Amrabat as well. Been a good performance by Manchester United so far this evening. Big game for them, and so far they really have risen to the occasion. McTominay on the right, cross takes a deflection, Muslera stretches and is able to catch it. Now there's space for Galatasaray to work with, he just rolls the ball out to the feet of Torreira. Torreira eats up the ground quickly, crosses the halfway line, those little legs speeding away, keeps going, Ziyech finds him, oh Bruno Fernandes catches him from behind, free kick for Galatasaray, yellow card for the Manchester United captain. Yeah, he had to make that foul because he'd just been drawn towards the ball, took his eyes off Torreira for a, a fraction of a second and Torreira just advances past him, arm across the shoulder from Bruno Fernandes. Yes, he's disappointed, but it is a yellow card. Not his fault though, Stephen, as you can see by his remonstrations afterwards, that's someone else's fault. No, I don't think it was about that, I think it oh, was, was it about not? the other end. He felt that the pass should have gone into him at the top end of the pitch, and I agree with him, it was the right pass. And then he gets back on his bike and tries to recover into position. I think he's just frustrated at the other part of the game. Right, free kick then. Danger for Manchester United. Yes, they are leading 2-0. But these Galatasaray fans really don't need much to get heavily involved in this game once more. Dries Mertens could strike with his right foot. Sets up for Ziyech nicely, though, because it is to the right of the Manchester United goal as we look away to our right. It's that lovely distance as well, sort of seven, six, seven yards outside the penalty area. Anana's left the gap to the left-hand side of his goal. The Manchester United wall is there. Ziyech goes low and finds the back of the net. Anana thought it was going left. Ziyech went round the wall and he went to the goalkeeper's side. Anana was wrong-footed and it just goes zipping past him into the bottom corner. And Galatasaray back in the game. Galatasaray one, Manchester United two. Well, it's a goalkeeping error. It shouldn't go in there because that's the side that his, his side of the goal. He sets his wall up for his left, the goalkeeper's left. 
They cover that side, and he just flashes it hard and low to Anana's right. He takes a step to his left. He gambles that he's going to try and whip it over the top of the wall. That is a big error from Anana. So, three goals in the game, not even half an hour played. And Galatasaray have something to hang on to now. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 2. The fans continue to celebrate the goal. Hakim Ziyech's second goal for Galatasaray, having joined on loan from Chelsea this season. Now the booing and the whistling starts again as Juan Bissaka bursts forward. Challenge comes in from Bardacca, clears the ball and it goes out for a Manchester United throw. It'd been a really good display from Manchester United up until that point, full of confidence. But the one player who didn't look confident was Anana. He made that error with the kick out, he got lucky from it, and then he makes a mistake again. It's not been the ideal start to his career. But on a whole, Manchester United have looked very, very comfortable. Throw in for them in an attacking position wide on the right. Volume is cranked up to the max again from the Galatasaray fans. Anthony's pass goes straight out of play. And Galatasaray take their throw quickly. And Dombele, calm under pressure, back to Muslera. Nearly overran that. Bruno Fernandes came scampering in to try and take it off his toe. Ihan chips it forward. Shaw intercepts but couldn't control it. Slices off his shin. And it goes out for a throw into Galatasaray just short of the halfway line. Eric Ten Hag standing down there impassively in the middle of the, the maelstrom with his uh, black hooded coat on, hands deep in the pockets, just surveying everything that is going on as Bardakja curls a lovely pass out to Angelino. Early pass from him, finds Zaha running at the Manchester United defence, cross comes in, takes a deflection, that's safe for Manchester United for now. Luke Shaw will get there first wide on the left. Plays a ball into midfield, read by Ahan, easily intercepted, here's Torreira, gets the shout from the right-back Bowie who went flying past him, but he played it to Ziyech, early ball from him, bounces in front of Inanna and he takes that comfortably in front of his left-hand post. Stephen Warnock. It's one of the most unexplainable things in football, but how when you score a goal do you suddenly find an extra yard in your legs, that extra 5%, extra 10%, or well, Galatasaray have just found it, and Manchester United's legs have suddenly gone heavy because the feel and the pressure of Galatasaray, it's quite incredible what a goal can do. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 2, and Galatasaray in the mood, streaming forward, Ziyech dances in from the right, hits it well, but goes rising over the crossbar, goal kick Manchester United. I've seen that far too many times from Ziyech in his Chelsea career where he likes to come inside on that left foot, often looking for that back post curler to a striker, but this time he tries to get the shot away, just slightly leaning back as he hits it, but just listen to that atmosphere. Oh. In Group B, Sevilla lead PSV Eindhoven by a goal to nil. The other Champions League game that's kicked off at 5.45 this evening. That is in Arsenal's group. We've got full commentary tonight on Five Live and BBC Sounds of Arsenal against Lens in the company of Ian Dennis and Chris Sutton. Arsenal knowing a point guarantees them a passage into the knockout stages and a win tonight at home against Lens wins them the group. Pass not played to Zaha, the Galatasaray fans sitting around us were calling for it. Lucas Torreira on the ball again, makes a little turn on the halfway line. Ihan, low pass out to the right back, Bowie. He wears the number 93 uh, for Galatasaray. Wins a throw. Level with the edge of the Manchester United penalty area on the right. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Manchester United leading by two goals to one. Garnacho and Bruno Fernandes with a couple of stunners. But Hakim Ziyech has got Galatasaray back into it. Dries Mertens controls the throw, tries to feed Bowie running in from the right. He's tackled, Amrabat has a chance to bring it away for Manchester United. The jeers and the whistles start again as United have the ball. Fernandes clearance hits Mertens and it goes out for a throw in to Manchester United in their left-back position. Yeah, they've been very comfortable on the ball, Manchester United, but since that goal, they're starting to press now Galatasaray, and they've just got to relieve that pressure again. They've just got to see a few passes, find their way up the pitch, hit those long diagonals into Garnacho and Anthony, and stretch that pitch again. Hakim Ziyech is down, wanted a free kick. The referees told him to get up. Galatasaray don't get the decision, Manchester United will have a throw. Producer George has just spotted the conductor of the orchestra away to the left, who's got that sort of, um, it's like the Brian Clough green sweatshirt he used to wear back in the day. He's, standing, he's on a raised platform with his back, he's not watching a single second of the game and he's just getting 
everything going in the stands. It looks like he's got a goalkeeper kit on. Yeah, Is that does. number one on the back? It could be, couldn't it? Uh, their goalkeeper, actually, Galatasaray's keeper, is in green. He does have a number one on his back. He's been beaten twice this evening. He's got the ball at his feet. He's played it forward to Bardakja. Bardakja across to Ihan, the right-sided centre-back, and he starts to bring it up and crosses the halfway line. Finds Torreira. Torreira's little pass to the left finds Ndombele. Now Angelino. Angelino lays it off to Zaha. Zaha runs into a bit of trouble there. McTominay can't win it off him though. Zaha trying to use his strength. Wants a free kick, doesn't get it. Bruno Fernandes suddenly back on his feet. Drives the ball over the top of the Galatasaray back line. Controlled brilliantly by Garnacho. Great tackle by Bowie as Garnacho dropped the shoulder and tried to take him inside. And then Garnacho's hauled him back and that's a free kick for Galatasaray and they take that as quickly as they can. And Dombele trying to get away from Hoyland. And Dombele slides a pass to Ziyech on the right. Ziyech into the path of Sasha Bowie again. Oh, oh clever drag. Gets him past Lindelof. There's the cutback into the box. Doesn't reach Zaha. wan almost brought it away. Zaha again gets a chance. His shot's blocked by Maguire. Corner for Galatasaray. Oh, the, the Galatasaray fans are so angry because Bowie gets in a great position, tries to cross it across the box, across that six-yard box for a simple tap-in. Takes a slight deflection. And as it comes out to Zaha, he's just off balance. He's just Falling away to his left-hand side, can't get the strike he wants on goal. Good pressure from Galatasaray. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. Galatasaray corner coming. They're trailing Manchester United 2-1. It's taken short to Ziyech. Running around here is Mertens. Mertens cross. Oh, might get a flick. Anana blocks it. Maguire flicks it away. Offside flag goes up. It wouldn't have counted. Header from close range by Ihan. Anana just, it, it just hit him. He just reacted and he managed to block it. But... Uh, defender was offside. Yeah, I think it would have been very close, it would have gone to VAR, but the Manchester United backline step up ever so well, they just creep up as the ball comes into the wide man, Torreira, as he crosses it in, Ihan is in an offside position, we're just seeing the replay in front of us, and he would have been offside, so really good line from Manchester United. Manchester United can win this game tonight, and Copenhagen don't win away to Bayern in the later kickoff. Manchester United will start the final round of group games in second place in the group with their fate in their own hands. They'd face Bayern at home. Bayern are already qualified as group winners. And in the other game, it'll be Copenhagen against Galatasaray. So Manchester United need the win. Here's Amrabat in his white Manchester United shirt. Wan Bissaka's curling chip pass for McTominay to chase. Bardaccia has to head it behind. That's a Manchester United corner. Again, it's McTominay making that forward run, running beyond Rasmus Hoyland, making sure that there's two outlets up front for Manchester United. And it's just about to say, just before that passage of play, it's not sticking up front, they're not getting those options in behind now. You've got to be brave, and bravery isn't always winning tackles. It's about making runs beyond midfield and knowing that that will free up space for Bruno Fernandes or Amrabat then to just get the ball, slow the pace of the game down, and that's what you've got to do away from home. I think it's fair to say that Bruno Fernandes is getting some stick there as he goes over to take the corner for Manchester United. He won't care. Kills it into the near post. wan stretches. Ball is cleared. And now back to Anana. Anana controls on the halfway line. Blimey, that was a dainty turn and a dangerous one. It's a great ball out to the right, though. Here's Bruno Fernandes. Gets his head up. Cross comes in. Miscued by Bardaccia. Might run to McTominay. He lets it go. And that'll be another corner for Manchester United. What about that from Anana? Well, I'm just looking at the press box around us and the Turkish sort of media are looking, sort of shaking their heads as if to say, what is he playing at? But mm -hmm. that's the confidence of the guy. We said he'd had a tough night so far, but his confidence never seems to be affected, does it? Last 10 minutes of the first half. Corner for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes gets ready to take it again. He holds his right arm in the air, runs at the ball. It's an away swing, a powerful header over the bar from McTominay. That'll be a goal kick for Galatasaray. They've just got to continue to want the ball, Manchester United, in, in tough situations. Often when you're away from home and the pressure's on, draw fouls, slow the game down, get back into your rhythm of playing. Don't let Galatasaray get into their rhythm because it's been a good performance. It's just about one error from Anana that's cost them a goal. And now they're feeling that little bit of pressure from Galatasaray. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 2 in what's been an absolutely gripping first half. You're listening to it on 5 Live, BBC Sounds and BBC Radio Manchester this evening. Live from Istanbul, Maguire playing a 1-2 with Amrabat. Really 
inside the Manchester United half and it gets the approval of Stephen Warnock. Strong challenge on wan -Bissaka. good tackle by Undombele. Eventually the ball goes out for a throw to United. That's, that's being brave. That's how you get up the pitch. That's how you progress. Lovely little one-two by Harry Maguire. The simple thing for Harry Maguire to do is try and play back to Anana, put his goalkeeper under pressure, or play the pass in and drop even deeper and not really give himself an outlet. But Manchester United away again. Oh, Hoyland oh, very nearly got onto that. Muslera flying off his line, does well for his team. Acrobatic volley away into the stands for a throw into Manchester United. That was one long ball from Harry Maguire. Nearly found Hoyland. If Hoyland had got there first, Muslera was so far off his line, any decent touch or lob, and that could have ended up in the back of the Galatasaray net. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Manchester United leading. Throw in for them. Galatasaray fans think that United are trying to run the clock down. Fernandez hooks it forward with his right foot. Cleared by Angelino. Here's Anthony. Anthony trying to draw the challenge of Angelino. Took a knock, he's gone down. And the referee again tried to play advantage, saw the foul and has given it as a free kick. And he's actually quite concerned for Anthony here because... Uh, he's obviously never seen him play before because he does <laughs> like to go down and make a meal of it. <laughs> I think Angelino got the yellow card there for the challenge as well. Yeah, that, good that, play from Anthony again. Yeah. They'll draw the, fa draw the foul, make the most of it, sit on the floor as long as you can. I'm being a little bit sarcastic when I say that, but he does, <laughs> he, he, he likes to make the most of it. And yeah. in all fairness, that's what you have to do in, in, in places like this, make the most of it, frustrate the players and the crowd. Well, he does give him a kick in the yeah. calf, but... It's a yellow card, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And he got a yellow card, it was brandished quickly. Free kick, oh, clever one, slid down the right to Anthony again. Anthony into the penalty area, drives across him with his left foot, cleared, but only as far as Garnacho tries to hit it hard with his right foot, Ziesch makes the block, the ball bounces once outside the Galatasaray penalty area. High hand chests it down, plays it to his right, Bowie clears, Luke Shaw stretching controls That's on the late. chest, caught by Ziesch, free kick for Manchester United. Now that's not going to be a yellow card. Ziyech has quickly come over and apologised to Luke Shaw. They had done battle before, of course, in the, uh, the kits of Chelsea and Manchester United. Tonight it's Galatasaray and Manchester United. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Luke Shaw's OK, picks himself up. Play continues. Manchester United, of course, still without a whole host of players uh, who are unavailable to Eric Ten Hag. Bowie's challenge, that does get a yellow card. He's come through the back of Garnacho. And Gonacho is down and seems to be in some pain. Yeah, he just draws that foul and Bowie kicks through the back of him. I'm not so sure it's a yellow card, though. I think the referee's just trying to calm this game down. He doesn't want to get in out of hand, but what you are going to do is you're going to entice these Galatasaray fans to, to jeer and boo even more. Just looking at that, Stephen, as a former fullback, you've got both fullbacks now for Galatasaray on yellow cards with Anthony one side and Garnacho the other. So oh. Manchester United will take that all day long. Feed won't them they? the ball, give them the ball, let them run at them, isolate them in 1v1 situations. Be clever how you do it. Don't be running round them if you're Luke Shaw and Wan Bissaka. Just let them get at them. Closing stages of the first half. Free kick for Manchester United. And given the way their Champions League campaign has gone this season, they will not be taking anything for granted just yet. Now, who's that has fallen on the floor? Angelino has fallen at the feet of Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire just looked at him, shrugged and said, come on, get up. He did get the free kick. Not entirely sure what's happened there. I mean, he, he just runs into Harry Maguire. Dear, Harry dear. Maguire doesn't even move. That's never a foul. No. That was a bit embarrassing from Angelino, but he won his team the free kick. They've taken it and they brought the ball up. To the halfway line, wide on the right. Bowie, Garnacho, quick as a flash, in. Sticks a left foot out, makes the tackle. Throw in for Galatasaray. Good run being made forward by Torreira. Bowie's not able to find him with the throw. He throws back to Ihan. Now that ball forward's not a good one. Intercepted by Fernandez, who can't find Garnacho on the left. Ihan gets a second chance. Looking for Icardi. Flags down for now. Icardi scores for Galatasaray. Then the flag goes up. They'll have a look at it. It did look offside to the naked eye. He's taken it quite brilliantly, Hezekadi, but you, you never know until we see the replays. That goal may well stand. Yeah, well, it's it's Juan Basaka and it's Lindelof who he's in just advanced of or maybe in line with. Really good finish from, uh, finish from Icardi, but this will be very, very close. Referee saying, wait, I've just seen him put his hand up and say to Inanna, do not take the free kick as yet. We're getting another look on the screen now. 
Yeah, I think it's the I think it's Lindelof who's the one who could possibly be playing him on, but decisions being given, no goal. No goal. Manchester United escape. Wonderfully taken by Icardi. Anana couldn't do anything about it, and eventually Manchester United do get the free kick. So could have been 2-2, remains 2-1. And Anana in the middle of the Manchester United half takes one long step back and then clips the ball forward with his right foot. Now, I think McTominay's gone down holding his face, claiming he was caught by Angelino. Angelino's knocked the ball into the body of Anthony, back onto himself and out for a throw into Manchester United, which they take through Wambasaka. McTominay's OK. Receives the throw from Wambasaka, but can't do anything with it, and the ball just runs off his right foot and goes out for a throw to Galatasaray but I think Manchester United will be quite happy now to get in at half-time with the lead 2-1 and they've, they've played pretty well haven't they Stephen? Yeah they have I, I've, I've been really impressed with Manchester United I think the, the one thing uh, uh, fault of the game was just the Anana uh, decision for the for the goal at the free kick where he just trust your wall and believe that they're going to do the job apart from that it's been really positive from Manchester United Angelino's ball forward really well read by Maguire steps in and intercepts plays it forward Zaha's down who might have been caught by Maguire as he went in and made the interception. Zaha stayed down and is still complaining. The referee didn't give it as a free kick. The fourth official is about to tell us how many minutes of added time we've got to go. Ziyech scored the free kick for Galatasaray on the ball, but deep inside his own half, across to Ihan. But he can be so deadly, not just with the shooting, but with the passing with that left boot from deep as well. So Manchester United have got to be careful. Two minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Bardakja driving forward from centre-back to the edge of the box, nearly flicked it into the path of Zaha. Bardakja wins a tackle, Zaha stumbling, falls on the ball in the box, picks himself up, play continues, lays it back to Icardi who hits the shot, that's blocked by Amrabat, headers flicked away by Lindelof, and now the referee's given a handball against Zaha. Why didn't he give that actually when it happened, Raft? rather than after <laughs> when Icardi hit the that shot? That is such a bizarre decision from the referee. Very, very strange. Weird. Uh, we have got just over a minute left to play in this first half. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 2. Arsenal Lance commentary on the way on 5 Live and BBC Sounds this evening. Kicks off at 8 o'clock with Ian Dennis and Chris Sutton. Uh, and you can listen uh, to our commentary this evening uh, and our coverage this evening alongside the, uh, the BBC final score service the video printer uh, and the graphics which you can get via the uh, the BBC Sport app Torreira has been caught inside the Manchester United half now that is a yellow card for a high boot from Amrabat who just put his foot in and just clipped Torreira and didn't get the ball I think I I've got to say the referee Jose Sanchez is having a shocker I mean some of the decisions that he's give uh, have been really poor that is not a yellow card he actually goes in and it's just this the studs are showing. There's no contact at all from Ter on Torreira, and Torreira goes rolling round. Free kick from deep, Maguire heads it away, Angelino lets it run past him. About ten seconds remaining at the end of the first half. Manchester United just need to see this out, Galatasaray in possession. But Sasha Bowie, for some reason, decides to play back to his goalkeeper, and that is that. Well, what a 45 minutes uh, of noise, action, controversy, drama and fabulous goals as well that we've seen. Manchester United lead 2-1, Stephen. Garnacho and Fernandes with a couple of belters for them, but the Inanna mistake just keeps it in the balance. Yeah, it does, but Manchester United have controlled the game. They oh, they did do up until that point, so I think at half-time going in, that's the message Eric Ten Hag's got to say, is be expansive, make sure that you control the game, because Galatasaray aren't good enough to, to live with Manchester United tonight. We've seen that in the first 30, 30 minutes or so. So Manchester United's players leave the field. The last man off is the referee with the ball in his left hand and he's getting a whole heap of stick at the moment from the Galatasaray fans. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 2. There are probably a couple of positives for United, aren't there, Stephen? One, how they've played in the two goals that they've scored and, and the other one probably being that once they did concede to, to Galatasaray, they didn't let in another, which could A, have easily happened given the atmosphere, but, but also they do have a tendency, United, once they concede one, to concede two. 
Yeah, and, and you got that feeling that that might happen. Um, yeah. But they, they weathered the storm. Then they started to stretch the game again. McTominay started to make runs forward. That's where you've got to be brave and get on the ball. However, this isn't this isn't over this game because of that goal. This changes that whole complex. If the game had have been 2-0 at half-time, there'd have been... I mean, the, the players that have been going in saying, we want more. Mm. Whereas now it's a bit like, oh, there's a little bit of caution in the way that they're going to play. So it's, uh, it'll be a really interesting team talk from Eric Ten Hag at halftime. But you wouldn't want them to play with caution in the second half because you feel like if they do play with caution, they'd, they'd be there for the taking, wouldn't they? Because of the atmosphere? It, it becomes too easy for Galatasaray yeah. when players don't run forward because then y- you can close down quicker. It's like in Dombele, when you think of the first goal and McTominay stretches him and pushes him forward, suddenly the pitch opens up in the middle and then Bruno Fernandes, he's great at finding space on the pitch. So how does that happen? The run from McTominay. Keep doing those things and that's how you win football games. That's how you brave away from home and that's exactly what you've got to do. If McTominay doesn't make those runs anymore, well, and Dombelli can see him two yards away. He can stay with him. The game becomes easy then to, to challenge. You also don't have an outlet to, to uh, Rasmus Hoytland then because he's, he's picked up by two defenders. Whereas if, if, if um, McTominay or Bruno Fernandes makes those runs forward, it's completely different. Uh, thank you uh, both. The other game uh, in... The, uh, the early window is the one in Arsenal's group and Sevilla lead PSV Eindhoven by a goal to nil uh, at the break. Sergio Ramos uh, with that goal. Uh, and Arsenal Lons is our commentary from eight o'clock tonight. We'll keep you across all the games in the championship as well. There are six in total. Uh, we'll go to the Emirates after the latest BBC News with Mark Summers. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Good evening. Hamas, as the youngest Israeli hostage held in Gaza, Kafir Bibas, a 10-month-old baby, has died in an Israeli airstrike along with his four-year-old brother and their mother. The Israeli military says it's investigating. The Bibas family has released a statement thanking the Israeli people for their support. A 13-year-old boy has been sentenced to two years in custody for killing his foster carer by running her over with her own car. Marcia Grant, who was 60, died in Sheffield in April. The BBC's Newsnight programme is to be shortened to a half an hour and more than 30 jobs are to be cut as part of money-saving plans. The News at One TV bulletin is to be extended to an hour and will be broadcast from Salford. And finally, British Gymnastics has announced new safeguarding policies for young athletes, including a ban on coaches weighing gymnasts. It follows an independent investigation which found systemic issues of physical and emotional abuse. Five Live News. And in the latest travel news, starting in Greater Manchester, the M62 westbound two lanes are closed at the moment from Junction 12 at the Eccles Interchange to Junction 11. The entry slip road there also partially blocked because of an accident. Traffic is moving, but it's looking fairly slow, so expect delays. Northamptonshire, the M1 northbound two lanes are closed at Junction 15 at the Northampton turning. There's been an accident again, traffic moving, but very slowly. In Bridgend on the M4 westbound, two lanes are closed. There's been it have been two separate accidents, sorry, between Junction 36 and 37 around Bridge End. It's in the roadworks area, so that is not helping delays. It is looking very slow. In Essex, the M11 northbound, all traffic is being held at the moment between Junction 8 at Bishop Stortford and Junction 9. There's been an accident there. Traffic is stationary and building quickly. And in Hampshire, the M3 northbound is closed for accident investigation work at Junction 5 for Hook. Looking really busy back to the Basingstoke turn-off, also very so on the A30 towards Hog and on the approach to Junction 5 at the roundabout as people are coming from Hog. Ellie Brennan, 5 Live Travel. On BBC iPlayer. Now, what will we are? Does it just get cold? No, 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 no. Doctor, you can get the TARDIS back, can't you? Use the Sonic. If the TARDIS is in danger, it goes away and it only comes back once the danger is done. There's something that's so bad that TARDIS ran away. Egypt. What are they? Doctor! Mama! Their time has come. Doctor Who continues this Saturday on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. 
Galatasaray won Manchester United two at the break. Severe lead PSV by a goal to nil, which means if that stays the same, if Sevilla beat PSV, Arsenal are through to the last 16, even before they play Lons tonight. But Ian Dennis, top spot would still be up for grabs. That is very true, Mark. Yes, you're right, because then um, Arsenal would need a draw to top the group if PSV failed to win tonight. So they would, and also it would open it up for, uh, for give Lons something to play for because Lons currently third in the uh, in the table. So if PSV were to uh, to slip up there, then Lons, knowing that they play Sevilla in their final game at home, would have a real incentive to try and get something from this game. So we could still have some excitement yet. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt that you will have excitement tonight. Well, I, I hope that faith is, is, is vindicated. Yeah. Are you looking forward to an exciting evening, Chris Sutton? <laughs> oh, yeah, we, I mean, we had excitement. Uh, we've had excitement already. Ian Dennis going for a double dessert to... to um, <laughs> I knew you were going to mention that. <laughs> which is, I mean, it is a cold evening. You but, are just so predictable. Uh, but if, if Lanza are as hungry as Ian Dennis, then <laughs> Arsenal could be in for a game. I, I haven't I haven't come across a football team yet that's as hungry as Ian Dennis, to be honest with you. But um, two of the same pudding or two two different puddings? Two of the same. Two of the same. Right, yeah. Okay. Anyhow, I didn't fancy you... the carrot cake. I fancy the chocolate and orange cake. Yeah. You're not a carrot cake man, are you? To Not be really. honest, I mean, bless you. I mean, you've got lots of qualities, but but embracing <laughs> carrot cake isn't one of them. Can we talk about the football? <laughs> yeah. What are you expecting tonight, Chris? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting um, Arsenal's mindset uh, to be that they want to want to top the group, so they'll, they'll just think about winning the game, keeping the momentum going, top of the Premier League. They'll want to top this group. And, and, you know, then, you know, going into the last group game, Mikel Arteta can rest players and play players who, who haven't, you know, got a regular game. But at this moment in time, the focus will just be on topping the group this evening. And if, if Sevilla do uh, Arsenal a favour, then, uh, then good for Arsenal. Uh, we shall leave you both to the puddings and back later. Full commentary from eight o'clock here on Five Live. Now, the top two in the championship are in action tonight. Uh, leaders Leicester facing the team at the bottom. Sheffield Wednesday, Betty Glover's at Hillsborough. Evening, Mark. Quite the contrast between these two. Top v bottom. Leicester have won 14 times this season. Sheffield Wednesday just the one and a massive 36 points separate the two. Leicester have also scored almost four times the amount of goals, conceding nearly three times fewer. So Sheffield Wednesday could have a tough night ahead. However, you could spin it and say they're the underdogs and everyone loves an underdog, right? Their German boss, Danny Roll, who's of course worked at Bayern Munich, is looking at it just like that. He said, I don't think anyone expects anything from us, but in football, you can beat the top of the table sides as long as you do everything right it's also his first night game since joining the club so i uh, do hope he's got a woolly hat on yeah it is cold tonight that's a 7:45 kickoff also at 7:45 in the championship blackburn birmingham leeds swansea southampton bristol city and sunderland are at home to huddersfield and then at eight o'clock at Portman Road Ipswich against Millwall Aaron Paul yeah hello all from Deep Dart Suffolk and at Portman Road where we're witnessing a thick blanket of fog currently descending onto the ground is that a metaphor for Ipswich's recent form I'm not sure what I do know is that boss Kieran McKenna is hoping that back to back home games will get his side back on track Town love playing here though winning 15 of their last 16 on home soil scoring 56 goals in the process they welcome a Millwall side though still adjusting to life under new head coach Joe Edwards but needing to sort themselves out after taking a beating by Coventry at the weekend. Fog, as I say, continuing to drop. Let's see. We let's hope we can see the pitch mark from our bird's eye view uh, come eight o'clock tonight. Uh, let's go to the warmth of the uh, indoor sports, the UK Snooker Championship. Jamie Broughton watching second round action. Yeah, nice and toasty here, Mark. Two former <laughs> champions book their place in the quarterfinals this afternoon. The three-time winner, Ding Zhenhui, hit top form as he beat Tom Ford by six frames to three. Ding started the match with brilliant back-to-back -back centuries and then he wrapped up victory with another century break. The Chinese superstar now faces Mark Williams or Jamie Clark. Meanwhile, on the other table today, the 2011 champion Judd Trump hammered Jamie Jones 6-0. He now faces a showdown with either Mark Selby or Barry Hawkins. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Two big sports stories today. One being Luke Donald staying on as European captain for the 2025 Ryder Cup. And we'll talk to Ian Carter about that later on and hear from Donald himself. The other 
being Owen Farrell making himself unavailable for next year's Six Nations. The England Rugby Union captain says he's taken the step to prioritise his and his family's well-being. So let's bring in our Rugby Union correspondent, Chris Jones. Did you get any indication that he might Mm. take a step back after the World Cup? No, no, definitely not. It was only a couple of weeks ago he was talking about his short, medium and long-term ambitions with England. So this came like a bolt from the blue today. Let's confront the editor in the room, chappers. You know, Owen Farrell's in England, great, but he gets a lot of stick. I think a lot of that comes from outside England, whether it's because of his his guarded nature, steely persona, on compromising on-pitch attitude, wherever it might be. And he's England captain. And he speaks to former England skippers. It comes with the territory, but it seems a bit worse with Farrell. He gets a lot of flack, gets a lot of heat, a lot of stick. You always felt, though, it was a bit of water off a duck's back for him. It didn't really affect him. So when something like this happened, it did stop everyone in their tracks. But then you think of the last year. You think of how often Steve Borthwick has gone into bat for him in, pub- in public. And I, th- I thought today of Andy Farrell, Chappers, in mm. August, when it was in, the, in the, this circus that Farrell described as. You know, with the red card against Wales, it was yeah. overturned. Then it came. And for the first time ever, you've covered Andy Farrell's career like I have. And those two very rarely talk about each other in public. If they do, it's a coach-player relationship. For the first time ever, Andy Farrell spoke then, that day in August, like Owen's dad, not like the Ireland head coach. And looking back, maybe that was telling. And maybe that has shown that it was starting to get to Owen Farrell, starting to get to his family, starting to get to him and starting to get to people close to him. Um, and it's a reminder, isn't it, that however mentally resilient people are, and Owen Farrell is as mentally resilient as they come, it can still affect people. And under the surface, you can be worn down and you can be vulnerable. And the people I've spoken to today close to Farrell have gone, good on him. Good luck to him, and I hope he feels better after this break, however long it is from international duty. I, 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 but, but also, that you know, when, when the individual is being worn down, that you, we talk to many sportsmen and women in this situation, when the individual is being worn down, the family are worn down as well, whether that's mm. parents, partners, kids. And, and I think it's interesting that he, that he does mention his family's yes. well-being in all of this as 100%. well. 100%. Two young kids and... When we go back to what Andy Farrell was saying in public in August, he mentioned Owen's Owen's mum and his wife, and he mentioned mm. Owen's wife. So he said that it takes its toll, the, the, the stick he gets, the abuse, if you want to use that word. You know, he was booed at the World Cup. I think a lot of that was coming from, from French fans, from locals, from those away from the England fans, because the majority of England fans are going to see Owen Farrell for what he is, which is a, an England great. He wears his heart on his sleeve and gives everything for that country. Um, but outside England, and it's a whole variety of reasons could go into this, um, he is a, a bit of a pantomime villain in some quarters, and there isn't a huge amount of warmth to him, I mean, that's, that's perhaps you could say the same about a Johnny Sexton, a Dan Bigger, these iconic players who wear their heart on their sleeve, whatever it might be. And it's, it's probably a, a chat for a longer time. Um, but definitely telling, isn't it, that he spoke about his own mental well-being, but also his family's. And Owen Farrell now in 2023 is a dad and a husband. And at the start of his career, he wasn't. And maybe that's significant. And will he, he'll, he'll, he's not stepping back from rugby full stop. I mean, no. he'll continue to, to play for, for Saracens, yes. which I'm guessing just allows him to do what he loves without all the, well, <laughs> rubbish. Yeah, all, all the, everything that comes with it. And and maybe this could be a great thing for Owen Farrell. If we talk about him as the rugby player here, not as the bloke, I think everyone at the moment is thinking about Owen Farrell, the bloke. But if we have a word about him as the rugby player, he wants to play deep into his 30s. He wants to do what Johnny Sexton has done and retire at, at 38, if he can. And maybe this will prolong his career. He takes some time back. He mentally refreshes. He's still going to captain Saris. The club are clear of that. He's still going to captain the club. He's been in great form for Saris as they march up the table. A few missed kicks the other day, but he's in really good form. So, yeah, maybe this is the break he needs the bloke and a person and as a family man, but then also as a player, if and when he does feel ready to return to England, he might come back an even better version of Owen Farrell. Uh, let's head back. Thank you very much, Chris, to Istanbul. Teams out for the second half. Remember, Arsenal lawns at eight o'clock. Now the second half of Galatasaray Manchester United with the English side 2-1 up. Stephen and Ali. Thank you, Mark. Yes, we were just about to get underway there. Galatasaray were ready to kick off, trailing 2-1. Maro Icardi had the ball at his feet and the referee came marching out with his own ball and said, no, we're not going to use the one you've got. We're going to use the one I've got. Manchester United were first out of the tunnel, uh, predictably booed and whistled back onto the field. It was actually pretty quiet inside the stadium for about 15 minutes or so. And then as soon as they reappeared, just suddenly straight back up uh, to full volume. 
blasting, pumping music as well when Galatasaray came out onto the field. Volume only matched by uh, our taxi driver's music. He was enjoying that as well. <laughs> on, on it. How loud was that? I mean, that was just... You enjoy it? Well, briefly, but I thought we're going to be in this cab for about an hour, and I'm not sure I can take that for. I know, and then George didn't have the bottle to tell him that no. to just lower it a little bit, and then he, the heat was high, and he didn't want to ask him for that as well. Yeah, yeah, we were being careful, weren't we? Yeah. George going via Google Translate, just getting the message across. <laughs> but we're here, we're drying out, and we're watching Manchester United leading Galatasaray by two goals to one. Angelino's volley cross into the Manchester United penalty area is cleared by Harry Maguire. Neither managers uh, made a change at half-time. Galatasaray playing from right to left in the second half. You're listening to us on Five Live, BBC Sounds and BBC Radio Manchester this evening, live from a very wet Istanbul. The rain uh, has started falling again, actually, as this second half gets underway. First time clearance from Maguire. Icardi takes a tumble, complains to the referee. Maguire just shrugs, looks back and says, I don't know what you're complaining about. The ball is played again into the Manchester United half. Slightly worrying signs, not worrying signs, but it's very much started the second half as Galatasaray would want it to. They're on the front foot and now they've just won a free kick 30 yards from goal. Yeah, this will be a real test of character for Manchester United in the second half. And Eric Ten Hag will learn plenty about his players. He's constantly trying to adapt this team and trying to better it. And this is a, a real sort of understanding of where his team are at in this second half. They have to make sure that they go after this Galatasaray team to get something out of this game. They're leading 2-1. They're defending this free kick. Ziyech takes it, curls it in towards the penalty spot, headed away by Lindelof. Missed cue clearance by Garnacho. Angelino side foots one across to Therese Mertens. Mertens plays wide and back it comes to Bowie. Bowie to Ziyech. Ziyech in a central position. 40 yards out, and he's got Rasmus Hoyland in front of him. Hoyland forces Galatasaray to play it out wide right. Mertens cross, dangerous into the near post, and into the side netting. Half the stadium thought that had gone in the back of the net, but Manchester United breathe a huge sigh of release. The centre-back, Ihan, who'd stayed forward for the free kick, caught it well at the near post, just the wrong side of the post, Stephen. Yeah, really good ball in, and that's the start that Manchester United didn't want in this half. Three minutes into the half, and straight away Galatasaray putting them under pressure. Big, big opportunity. Onana delighted that it just crept past his, his left-hand post, but there's the warning sign straight away from Manchester United. Throw in Manchester United on the left, just short of the halfway line. They're in white shirts, red shorts, white socks, playing from left to right in this second half. Galantasaray uh, in the red and orange shirts. Uh, Left-hand side of the shirt is red, back and front. Right-hand side is orange. Merton's curling pass, won't find Icardi. Inanna was quickly off his line, controls it on his thigh, draws Icardi into him and then casually picks the ball up. Manchester United, an honour in goal. Wan-Bissaka, Maguire, Lindelof and Shaw, the back four tonight. Amrabat and McTominay in front of them. Anthony, Bruno Fernandes, Alejandro Garnacho with Rasmus Hoyland as the centre-forward. Marcus Rashford unavailable this evening due to suspension, of course. The likes of uh, Lissandra Martinez, Casemiro, Christian Eriksen, Mason Mount still unavailable flashing lights above is that lightning in the sky i think it is i really do because the rain's coming down heavy again yeah. but don't worry the pitch is great it's in good condition the ball's still rolling very very well banana has the ball at his feet inside the manchester united penalty area he's all in black chips the ball up to the halfway line headed forward by Dakchi, who has to go chasing back into his own half now under pressure from hoyland who got there in time Flicks the ball up in the air and his centre-back partner, Ihan clears, intercepted by Luke Shaw. Sevilla have a second goal against PSV Eindhoven. We thought they had a second goal in the first half, that must have been ruled out. Here's Shaw's cross from the left in towards the far post beyond Hoyland. They do have a second goal now, and the series scored. Sevilla 2, PSV Eindhoven 0 in Arsenal's group. Arsenal lost full commentary on the way uh, tonight here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Galatasaray, Fernando Muslera in goal, Sasha Bowie, uh, Abdul Karim Badakchi, Khan Ihan and Angelino, their back four, Tangi and Dombele, Lucas Torreira as the midfield two, uh, Hakim Ziyech, Dries Mertens, Wolf Zaha in support of Icardi. Galatasaray fans don't like the fact that Manchester United have been given a free kick. Wide on the right, inside the Galatasaray half, and Bruno Fernandes just says to McTominay, let's just take the heat out of it, let's slow it down, I'll walk over here, we'll kill a few seconds, I'll take the free kick, and actually, 
Uh, given Scott McTominay's goal-scoring form, particularly for his country, he can be quite useful uh, on the end of some of these set pieces. Fernandez drills it across to the left-hand side of the pitch. Sasha Bowie heads it away, and it goes out for a throw-in to Manchester United. As I said in the first half, uh, a win is obviously the best result for Manchester United. That is stating the blooming obvious. But if also Copenhagen don't win away to Bayern Munich tonight, then United will start that final round of games in second spot in the group table with their fate in their own hands. The lightning continues to flash in the sky above us. Amrabat, low pass, cleverly flicked with the back heel by Anthony to Juan Bissaka. Down the line to Anthony again on the right. He tries to get it onto that trusty left foot. Slides a pass into the box. That's intercepted, couldn't find McTominay. Maguire stoops to head a clearance forward to Bruno Fernandes. United ping it around and now Juan Bissaka's on the dribble coming in from the right. Anthony kills the ball out to Bruno Fernandes who's gone very wide on the right. Cross in towards the goal. Muslera sort of slaps it away. Seemed to be slightly surprised by it like it sort of exploded on him as it came into the six-yard box and the ball went loose in the box and Galatasaray have cleared. Ball loose inside the Galatasaray half and eventually the home team get a free kick. Stephen Warnock. Yeah, I just wonder whether Bruno Fernandes slightly mishit that cross and it was almost like a knuckleball effect yeah. and it, it caught the goalkeeper out, but credit to him. Dangerous ball down the right here for Sasha Bowie. He crosses, intercepted by Lindelof. It comes flying off Lindelof's left boot and goes behind for a corner to Galatasaray. Both teams needing the win, both teams will chase the win. Should be a really good second half here, live in Istanbul. Galatasaray fans crank up the volume again, particularly those. The ultras behind the goal away to our left, the end Galatasaray attacking. Ziyech curls it in, headed away to the edge of the box. Oh, Garnacho, I think, took a whack in the back of the head there as he went for the header. Manchester United get the free kick. It was Sasha Bowie who jumped with him, and Garnacho has gone down, and that will be uh, a sore one. If Manchester United end up drawing the game tonight, then it gets a little bit trickier. Their fate will be out of their own hands because Galatasaray will obviously stay a point ahead of them. Also, if Copenhagen were to win away to Bayern tonight, then Manchester United with a draw here would be out uh, of the Champions League. So a draw makes it dangerous. A defeat means they're definitely out, but at the moment they're leading this game by two goals to one. And I can see Stephen Warnock looking through reams of stats on this game so far. Stephen, you were slightly surprised, we were looking at about half-time, that Manchester United's possession in the game was, was slightly lower than we thought. It, it felt a bit more even than that. Yeah, it really did. I actually thought maybe on edging towards Manchester United, dominating, but um, the stats were it was around about 53%. Garnacho on the dribble for United into the Galatasaray penalty area. Shot is deflected. No, it's not. Right-footed effort. Goes behind for a goal kick. Bardakchi is booked for complaining about an earlier decision. He thought Galatasaray should have had a free kick earlier in that move. They didn't get one, and Bardacci, uh, for furious protestations, is the third member of the Galatasaray back four to end up on a yellow card. Torreira from deep, fires a ball forward with his right foot. Maguire lets it go. Was it Ihammer's book? Oh, and Anana had to be quick there as he clears with his right foot. And it's up towards the halfway line. Anthony's got good pace and skill there to get away from Zaha. Zaha tries to stick with him. Anthony's eventually tackled by Torreira. Did a really good job for Manchester United. Kept the ball, moved them up the pitch and won the throw. I can't believe three out the back four are booked from Galatasaray. I mean, what is Ayan doing there? What would you, why would you try and get yourself booked in a situation? It's not, not he's trying to get booked, but why would you, book, you talk yourself into getting booked? I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. But if you're a Manchester United player, go and attack them. Well, that's what Anthony's doing right now. McTominay running ahead of him. wan in space on the right. wan has crossed McTominay. Slides in from close range. Clinical stuff from Manchester United. They restore their two-goal cushion. What a crucial goal that could be in this group. And it seems so simple as they built it down the right. wan cross. McTominay in acres of space. Got the perfect contact. Galatasaray 1, Manchester United 3. Well, there's your bravery from McTominay, from wan from Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes, he said in the first half, he was picking up some lovely pockets of space and he finds himself in space. But what happens is Bruno Fernandes drives forward and McTominay almost runs alongside him and it gives Angelino a problem. He doesn't know whether to stay with McTominay or whether to go out to wan He delays the pass perfectly, Bruno Fernandes, into wan and then wan has the simple pass 
across the six-yard box into McTominay, who slides with his left foot and puts it past the helpless keeper. That is classic counter-attack football from Manchester United. Fourth goal of the season for his club for Scott McTominay. He's been scoring them for fun for Scotland as well. He got the two late ones, of course, in the 2-1 win against Brentford earlier in the season. Got a goal at Bramall Lane in the 2-1 win at Sheffield United and now a crucial one in the Champions League tonight. So Manchester United lead Galatasaray by three goals to one. And here is McTominay trying to control a ball inside his own half. It wouldn't quite come down for him. Hassled by Torreira, played back to Maguire. wan lobs it infield. Amrabat just nods it gently forward. Anthony does really oh. well. And there's frustration from Dries Mertens. Has a hack at Anthony. How's that not a yellow card? Well, Therese Mertens picks the ball up and says, I got the ball. I'm not sure he did. That was a bad challenge, wasn't it? He's just kicked him. I mean, think of Anthony against... Uh, who was it when he kicked him? Yes, who was that against? Is it Newcastle? I can't remember, but I know yeah, it's, yeah. it's... And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Just boots him. Yeah. Incredible. Free kick Manchester United. The rain is as heavy as it has been for most of the day now. It really is drumming down from the skies. Giant stadium here, Rams Park, huge, uh, steeply sided cauldron which really keeps in the noise. Doku, Manchester City. That's the one. Yeah. Came to me, I knew I'd get there in the end. I think Garnacho might be offside there, chasing the ball through. Yeah, the flag goes up as Muslera clear, so Galatasaray will have themselves a free kick. So the win would put Manchester United on six points. Copenhagen would start their game tonight. Uh, away to Bayern on four points. Galatasaray would be on four points and it's Copenhagen against Galatasaray in the last round of fixtures as Manchester United host Bayern on Tuesday the 12th of December. You can rest assured you'll be able to hear that in full on Five Live and BBC Sounds uh, with qualification on the line for Manchester United. Right, double change coming from Eric Ten Hag. 12 minutes gone in the second half. 18-year-old Kobi Mainu, after the uh, fantastic Premier League debut at Goodison Park on Sunday, comes into the action. Sofiane Amrabat comes off and Anthony Martial comes on for Rasmus Hoyland. And I think neither of those, actually, Stephen, particularly surprising changes. Hoyland, just back from injury himself, missed the Premier League game at the weekend. Martial obviously scored. And, um, and Kobi Mainu will... Um, you know, we'll, we'll add some, some legs and some pace and he showed he had a very calm head uh, in the game at the weekend. Yeah, I think it's a, a great game for him to come on in and I think it gives him the opportunity to show what he can do again. He'll bring energy into there, but also as well, very, very composed on the ball when he plays. I think that was a, something that stood out against Everton was his, just his maturity on the ball. So Galatasaray on the ball, find themselves 3-1 down at home against Manchester United and they're waiting to make a couple of changes themselves. Just having a look back in the record books, in terms of English teams coming to Istanbul and winning away to Galatasaray, only three have managed it before. West Brom back in the 70s, Chelsea and Arsenal in more recent history. Here's Anthony on the ball, tried to dance his way past his man on the edge of the box. Martial gets a first touch. Martial then with the outside of his right boot, flicks it to Juan Bissaka. Martial again, left-footed ball, that looked like a possible handball by Bardakji, not given, Ziyech tries to control it, oh, Shaw ran into him, knocks him over and Luke Shaw gets a yellow card for the challenge. He was just right there on top of him, missed the ball, caught the man, referee saw it and immediately books Luke Shaw. So yellow cards flying around all over the place, but crucially for Manchester United, they lead by three goals to one. Right, Tangi and Dombele is being replaced by... The Portuguese Sergio Oliveira and Dries Mertens uh, is coming off and it's Kerem Ak Turkoglu uh, who's coming on for Galatasaray. So double change from Manchester United and a double change uh, for the home team as well. Ak Turkoglu uh, into their midfield. Bardakchi the centre-back looks for the longer ball over the top. Chased through by Icardi, he's never going to get to that one. And Anana is able to hold on to it and then roll it out to the feet of Victor Lindelof. So Manchester United, half an hour away from a famous Champions League win. Leading by three goals to one. Luke Shaw's curling pass down the left, chased by Bruno Fernandes. He knocks over uh, Ahan and then offers him a handshake in apology and Ahan eventually does accept that. Manchester United get the throw on the left 
taken towards Martial, who's dropped deep. Lobs the pass back to Maguire. Maguire just lets it run past him into his own half. And then plays a low ball to Scott McTominay, who allows that to run across his body. McTominay's caught on his left ankle by Lucas Torreira. He's in some pain. Manchester United get another free kick. Yeah, it was just a little bit late by Torreira. Stands on McTominay's foot as he receives the ball on his back foot and turns and drives at the Galatasaray players. More booing and whistling from the Galatasaray fans. Mainu, the 18-year-old on the ball for Manchester United. McTominay immediately uh, under pressure. Zaha wins it back, plays it back into his own half. Icardi opens things up to the right. Sasha Bowie driving forward. Garnacho's back to make the challenge. Falls to the floor. Bowie's too strong for him. Plays it back here to Ziyech. Ziyech tries to trick away past Bruno Fernandes. Decision given against Bruno Fernandes. And he's given it the very theatrical, woe is me, I cannot believe it. I'm aghast at the decision. And he looks pained, but it is a free kick for Galatasaray. And it's right on the corner of the Manchester United penalty area. Yeah, dangerous position. You know, Ziyech likes to hit that floated ball into the back post and whip it in that area. He's got the both deliveries that he likes to, to sort of go to. That's a... A silly foul from Bruno Fernandes, he can moan all he wants, but he's just clipped the heels of Ziyech. Danger for Manchester United then, they do have the two-goal cushion. They lead by three goals to one, it could be Ziyech here, it is with his left foot, whips the ball in and on, oh no! Slaps at it with his right hand, it spins behind him, ends up in the back of the net. And Andre Onana's having a night to forget in Istanbul. The ball was zipped in at pace by Hakim Ziyech, and he may well have seen it late, but he flaps a right hand and it doesn't get enough on it. And Galatasaray are back in the game again. Galatasaray 2, Manchester United 3. A horror moment for Andre Onana. Really poor goalkeeping. It's, it's unexplainable. It shouldn't happen at this level. He's having a, a terrible night and a night that he'll be desperate to forget about. But a, an easy ball in to deal with, and it's just a. I think it's. Um, I think it's Juan Basaka who goes to head it and almost just leaves it. Maybe he gets a shout from Anana, but he just leaves it, and Anana goes to punch it away and punches it into his own goal. Disastrous, really is. He's, he's punching a low ball there, it's coming in low at his ankles and he's diving down to his right and he's sort of half expecting someone to get a touch on it but he gets a good fist on the ball, he just completely miscues the punch, doesn't have his body behind it and it ends up in the Manchester United net behind him and suddenly it's game on again. What, I mean, what about these games away from home for Manchester United in the Champions League? 4-3 defeat at Bayern Munich, 4-3 defeat at Copenhagen, lost 3-2 of course to Galatasaray at home uh, in this group and now they lead Galatasaray by three goals to two but both goals both scored by Ziyech well I mean are we giving that one to Ziyech or is that an Anana own goal well they've been given to Ziyech on the board yeah. no I mean you, you can't do anything about that if you're a Manchester United outfield player you're just thinking well we're, we're so comfortable in this game and then your goalkeeper makes two errors in the game and it brings Galatasaray back in the atmosphere was the, the quietest that it had been all yeah. night and now listen to them, now they're up again, they're out the seats and yeah, that's a, a concern for Manchester United. Yeah. However, they've got themselves sort of, they've advanced again in the game and scored a, another goal. Yeah. They can definitely do it again because there's goals in, them, uh, uh, goals in this game for them. They put themselves under pressure again, there's another set piece to defend and I'm sure Anana will be nervous. This is from the other side, so this could be to Koglu, who might as well have a go with his right foot, having just seen what happened from the last free kick. wan was booked for the sliding challenge on Zaha. Akta Koglu curls it in. Now, that is headed away by Anthony Martial for Manchester United. And Muslera is a man who stands alone inside the Galatasaray half. And his clearance is blocked by Garnacho, and the ball spins away from Garnacho. Had it actually fallen to him, he was suddenly one-on-one -on -one against Muslera inside the Galatasaray half with absolutely no one else for company because they were all coming back from the free kick oh he's playing with fire there wasn't he the goalkeeper nearly gets caught out Garnacho, excellent covering the ground and closing the goalkeeper down just keeping an eye on Garnacho, whether it is pinged off his hamstring and it's stung it a bit but right. he's just limping on that far side a little bit can't take your eyes or ears off this one five live bbc sounds bbc radio manchester manchester united keeping it very very interesting exciting shall we say 
in these Champions League group stages. Leading 3-2, Zaha takes the ball off wan -Bissaka. Zaha finds Akta Koglu with the curling shot. Nanana has that covered. Didn't even have to dive, just moves across to his left, pats it down, and Harry Maguire gives him a big round of applause. Yeah, really good footwork from Nanana. He struggled in the game, but this time he just shuffles across and just senses where Akta Koglu wants to put the ball. Smart save from Nanana. Nanana drops the ball at his feet, clears with his right foot, Garnacho heads it infield, Martial will chase, Torreira nips in and pokes the ball back to Muslera. 25 minutes to play, Galatasaray 2, Manchester United 3, inside this very noisily, lively Rams Park. Icardi, little scoop pass, got that completely wrong. Maguire intercepts on the edge of the Manchester United penalty area. Maynou does well, runs hard, stretches. Ball reaches Bruno Fernandes, curling ball forward. Oh, nearly found Garnacho. Muslera read it off his line. Clears with his right foot. So, 3-2 to Manchester United here. Second Champions League commentary of the night. Comes from the Emirates Stadium this evening. Ian Dennis has the team news ahead of Arsenal launch. Two changes for Arsenal. Raya is back in goal instead of Ramsdale. And Haberts, who got that goal at Brentford, replaces Trossard. Thank you, Ian. Clearance from Maguire with his right foot. Straight back to the action here in Istanbul. Bardakci takes it away from Martial. Nearly intercepted by Anthony, who's put in a good performance for Manchester United wide on the right, but it does come off him and goes out for a throw-in to the home team. Scott McTominay does the chasing. Muslera inside his own penalty area. Low pass to his right to Bardakci, who's under pressure from Martial. Back to Muslera again. They're just toying with Martial here. Bardacci gets it back and he dummies the left-footed pass forward, plays it into the box. Here comes Bruno Fernandes. Muslera plays it across the penalty area. Ihan's got to be careful. Back to Muslera. They're taking a risk here. Chip ball out to the right, headed down by Sasha Bowie. An incredible strike of lightning in the sky above, but it's Galatasaray trying to strike down the right-hand side. Here's Lucas Torreira in space, delays the cross, plays the ball back to Ziyech on the hat-trick, curling effort, and Nana saves it. Cardi was right in his face. Cardi came in to attack what he thought might be a cross for his head. The offside flag has gone up against him. Ziyech was going for goal, and Nana did well to make the save. Well, it was incredible football from Galatasaray because they just didn't look comfortable at all at the back, playing it out. Muslera at the back, the goalkeeper, he didn't want the ball at all. And he plays the ball out to the, the right-hand side and he just draw Manchester United out of position. Suddenly, they're in at goal and Torreira, he just didn't have that pace to get away from the Manchester United players. Five goals, qualification for the knockout stages on the line, teeming torrential rain, forks of lightning in the sky, unbelievable noise inside the stadium. It is a dramatic night in Istanbul and we've still got a quarter of this game to go before we bring you Arsenal Lance in full uh, with Ian Dennis and Chris Sutton. Throw in for Manchester United. Juan Bissaka has the ball above his head. He's midway inside the Galatasaray half on the right. Bruno Fernandes screaming instructions at one of his teammates. Maynou couldn't quite control the pass from Juan Bissaka. Foul by Juan Bissaka. Zaha's down. And he picks himself up and plays the ball back to Muslera. Zaha, by the way, has been in good goal-scoring form for Galatasaray in the league recently and did score against Manchester United, his former club once, uh, at Old Trafford in the 3-2 win that the Turkish side enjoyed earlier in the group. They're just slowing it down for the moment, but they have the ball. Galatasaray as Torreira plays it across here to Bardakci. Bardakci running forward scooped pass, Juan Bissaka heads it away, only as far as Zaha uses his strength to hold off a challenge, little pass through the legs of the defender, chipped forward by Akta Koglu, but Zaha can't get onto that ball and it goes behind for the Manchester United goal kick. Now, poor from Akta Koglu, it was a simple pass back into Wilfred Zaha, but Manchester United will be delighted that he did overhit it because it was a, a dangerous attack, can have a little nutmeg by Wilfred Zaha into Akta Koglu. Banana passes out from the edge of his six-yard box. McTominay's quite happy to receive it. Torreira's behind him. McTominay to wan -Bissaka. Now the noise levels, the booing, the whistles goes up to try and put Manchester United under pressure on the ball in this second half, defending this 3-2 lead. Ziyech can't control the ball played forward to him. Maguire back to Anana. Anana dummies a clearance. Icardi closes in. Forward to Lindelof. Lindelof can't pass to Maguire. Now Maynou. Maynou to Lindelof, Manchester United have done really well to play up to the halfway line. Luke Shaw looking for the run of Martial, the pass is just beyond him and ends up at the feet of the other goalkeeper, Muslera. 
I just think he has to see that pass, Martial. There's there's just no option for Manchester United now. Took Rasmus Hoyland off and nothing sticking. He's not closing down the way Hoyland did. Has to bring more to the Manchester United team. Oh, Ziyech is ball forward. Act to Koglo! Stunning goal from the Galatasaray man. Lightning strikes in the air. And that was a thunderous hit from the Turkish international. The angle was tight, but he's rifled it past the Nana. And this crazy Champions League group stage goes on for Manchester United. It's Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3. Wow, where did that come from? I mean, it didn't look like there was any danger. The first touch, though, is phenomenal because he just kills it stone dead into his path. And then he has the audacity to hit it from 20, 25 yards. Just his first touch. Oh, it's around 18 yards just as he hits it and he just fires it past the Nana near post. Should the goalkeeper do better? Perhaps he should, but such is the speed and the pace of the shot. I still think Anana's at fault. But this game ends as a draw. Manchester United's fate in this group is out of their hands. They've been in control of this game. Garnacho racing onto a ball into the penalty area. Just can't quite get it under control to get the shot away. Three all into the last 20 minutes of the game. Crowd are going absolutely bonkers and Galatasaray come pouring forward again. Bowie to Ziyech. Cross comes in. Icardi nearly got it on the volley. Here's Bowie again. Edge of the penalty area, lays it back, driven shot straight at Anana, and this time he makes the save. What a game. Wow. Take a breath and just try and get your thoughts because this game is just end to end and some of the quality has been outstanding at times. They're in an absolute frenzy inside this stadium at the moment. You can tell by the noise that it's Manchester United who have the ball. Shaw's trying to play it forward to Garnacho. Shaw continues his run beyond him. Then he's tackled, he loses it. Free kick given against the Portuguese, Oliveira. And Manchester United will just take their time and slow it down again. So 3-3, a famous game at Old Trafford when these two teams first met in the Champions League back in 1993 in a second round encounter. That one finished 3-3, the return leg here in Istanbul finished 0-0. United went through on away goals. Martial on the turn. Oh, nearly played it through to Bruno Fernandes. I tell you what, I would not be surprised if we get at least one more goal in this game. No, it's just which way is it going to go? I mean, it might be even more than one goal. It might be a couple of goals because yeah. this is just so wide open as well. And Anana looks vulnerable. Galatasaray's defenders can't inter engage now because three of the four have been booked. Manchester United led the game 2-0. They led the game 3-1. They've now been pegged back to 3-3. Galatasaray and their fans, as you can hear, very much believe that they can go on to win this. Surely Manchester United aren't going to lose all three away games in this group 4-3. That, that would be just well they should never be losing this or they should never lose this game the position they were in how comfortable they were but it just shows a lack of concentration can just lead to so much in a game of football and Anana has been at fault for definitely two of the goals and arguably three I think it'd be interesting to get a goalkeeper's perspective on it but I think he should do better all the reaction, of course, in the Football Daily podcast available via the BBC Sounds app tomorrow to this game and to Arsenal Lens, which is our commentary that follows in the Champions League tonight. Arsenal much more comfortable in their group. Point tonight. They're through to the knockout stages. Win tonight. And they definitely win the group. Uh, PSV have a goal back in the other game in that group. That kicked off at 5.45. Sevilla down to 10 men. Sevilla lead PSV by two goals to one. Oliveira threads a pass through to Icardi. Icardi looking to return the favour to Oliveira. Martial was back there to make the interception. Nearly tackled by Oliveira. It's cleared up towards Garnacho. Garnacho lets it run to Bruno Fernandes. Hooks his pass on, looking for Garnacho down the left. Ihan makes the interception. This is going to be non-stop. Frenetic stuff for the last 15 minutes of this game. Six goals in it so far. 3-3. Space for Bowie down the right-hand side. Manchester United in trouble again. Bowie's in the box. There's the cutback. A couple of Galatasaray players getting each other's way. Torero's ball straight up the middle of the park and Mainu is there to put a right foot on it and clear. And the clearance runs to Garnacho. Garnacho keeps it in play on the right-hand side. Brilliantly chased back by Ziyech. Fantastic job done for his team. Basketball game now, Stephen, oh, end-to-end, end, isn't it? 15 more minutes of this, yes, please. This is 
great stuff. I mean, some of the play down the right-hand side then by ZS to a free Bowie down that right-hand side. Just couldn't quite pick out the pass. Credit to the two centre-halves of Manchester United. They dealt with the situation well. High hands ball, not a good one, but Tomane heads it away, reaches Bruno Fernandes, cushions are headed to himself, support left and right, sees Garnacho, the 19-year-old Argentine on his left, Garnacho up against Bowie, Bowie gets a foot in but Shaw's there in support if Garnacho wants him, Shaw uses a decoy, Garnacho with the right foot, oh my goodness me, just wide, goal kick for Galatasaray. Well, he looks as fit as I've ever seen him, Garnacho. He looks full of energy. You're in the 75th minute and he's still running at full pelt. And the, the tussle between him and Bowie has been quite brilliant. But Luke Young at there, just uh, sorry, Luke Shaw goes past Garnacho and allows him to put doubt into Bowie's mind. And then as he steps inside, he unleashes that, that shot across goal so close. Did you, did you see there, by the way, when Akta Koglu scored the goal, the lightning? Oh, came at exactly the same moment. I mean, if they've managed to catch that on television... Oh, hang on. Manchester United coming forward again. McTominay driving, shooting oh. just wide. That was close. They've gone close twice in the last couple of minutes. Martial's a little frustrated he didn't get the pass, but McTominay had every right to hit the shot. He wasn't far away. No, he wasn't at all. And Muslera was sat, sat on his backside because it, he'd given the eyes and he hadn't read the situation. I just thought the ball was going to nestle in the back of the goal. Tomane's oh. been really good tonight. Yeah. He has. It's just, he's just grown in that more advanced position and the running power that he has on the ball. Right, which way is it going? Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3. Given the way this group has gone so far this season for Manchester United, I'm sure their fans listening to us on 5 Live, BBC Sounds and BBC Radio Manchester are doing so with a certain sense of dread but both teams very capable of scoring here and now it's Galatasaray's turn to come forward Angelino's cross is half blocked the ball spins up in the air Torreira controls it midway inside the Manchester United half another lightning strike lights up the sky as Ziyech controls the ball wide on the right Luke Shaw in front of him Ziyech tries to draw him in Bowie's ball flicked round the corner by Oliveira couldn't be caught by Akta Koglu gets away from him and it goes behind for the goal kick to Manchester United. 13 minutes, plus added time remaining, 3-3. Three, three. He's made a difference, Oliveira, since he's come onto the pitch. He's brought more energy in that in that advanced position, wants to get on the ball, whereas Mertens was just sort of stood still a lot of the time, waiting, the, waiting for the ball to come to him. A couple of changes coming from Manchester United. Dallow on for Wan-Bissaka, and Facundo Pellistri is coming on for Alejandro Garnacho. I'm surprised by that because I thought Garnacho would be in a real danger down that left-hand side and just a few moments ago was running at full tilt, so I'm thinking he looks strong here. Back underway, Anana's clearance with his right foot. Dallow straight into the action, heads it forward. Anthony onto it for Manchester United. He's caused Galatasaray problems all evening, trying to get away from Ancelino. Lays the ball back here to Dallow inside the Galatasaray box. Still Dallow tries to shoot with his left foot, might fall in the penalty area for Pellistri. The substitute nearly with his first touch could have stuck it past Muslera. Muslera saves. Yeah, good goalkeeping by Muslera. Had to be alive to the situation. Good work from Anthony. Didn't go back again. Positive play. Simple ball into Dallow. This is, uh, I mean... <laughs> I wouldn't want to call it, I really wouldn't, because it could easily go either way this game. It's just a waves of attack, yeah. end to end. What Manchester United don't want if this finishes 3-3 is for Copenhagen to win away to Bayern this evening. Bayern already threw his group winners. It'll be interesting to see their team line-up, certainly at the start of that game. Martial flicks it to Anthony. McTominay's trying to hold his run to stay on side. Anthony delays the pass, comes to Pellistri. Pellistri shoots, gets underneath it and goes well over the bar. And that'll be another goal kick to Galatasaray. No, it opened up beautifully for him. Another good run by Luke Shaw down that left-hand side. Draws Bowie out of position again. That's certainly a, an avenue that Manchester United need to sort of target because they've had three or four opportunities from that left-hand side in the second half. So, goal kick Galatasaray. Just over ten minutes to play. Galatasaray three. Manchester United 3, Muslera drives the ball into the driving rain. Oh, header is one. It's fell awkwardly there, Lindelof. I think Lindelof. he's winded, winded himself, hasn't he? Yeah. Just Went up high, falls. landed very heavily, came down with a right bang. Oh, yeah. And the referee stopped the game just to check he's OK. So the ball's with Muslera, and that's where we'll restart the game, and Lindelof 
is going to be all right. Anyone's game. Arsenal lance on the way. Kicks off at 8 o'clock. Full commentary on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. But uh, still 10 minutes plus added time of this game remaining. So drop ball inside the Galatasaray half. Dropped at the feet of Torreira. Torreira side foots it to his right to Ihan. He plays it across to Badakchi. Badakchi in his red and orange shirt decides to take Martial on. Makes a run to the left. The little layoff from Oliveira into the feet of Zaha. McTominay tries to take it off him. Zaha gets away from him. Zaha slides the pass through. Couldn't quite find Akatoglu. Uh, Maguire not only intercepts it, but gets Manchester United moving forward. McTominay plays it to his left. Luke Shaw, good pace late in the game from Shaw. Driving forward from left back. Here's Palistri. Taken off him. And now Galatasaray. Might come on the counter. Ball is played down the right-hand side. Maynou's come across to cover. Then it's fed infield. And there's an interception there. And Lindelof is there for Manchester United and plays it forward. And here's Maynou again. Just inside his own half on the left to Shaw. Shaw flicks it down that left-hand side to Palistri. Bruno Fernandes holds off. Looks to get Palistri away down the left. He's done so. Manchester United making ground into the penalty area. Palistri still going. Oh! Flicks a right-footed effort just over the bar. Oh, Scott McTominay is furious, absolutely livid with Palistri, and he's got every right to be, because the set is just on at the edge of the box. Palistri's off balance, he's never going to get the shot away the way he wants to. McTominay is just prime, ready to get that shot away at goal. Don't be selfish, be unselfish, give your teammate the simple task of getting a better strike at goal. Two more changes coming for Galatasaray. One of those is the winger Baris Yilmaz, who is going to come on. And the other one is a centre-back, Danish centre-back, Victor Nelson. Muslera's waiting to take the goal kick. The two substitutes are waiting to come on. Nine minutes to play. Angelino is the first one to come off. So he's replaced by Victor Nelson. And Hakim Ziyech warmly applauded as he leaves the field. Two goals to his name. Andre Anana, I think, will kick himself for both. And that's why we're at Galatasaray 3, uh, Manchester United 3. So Yilmaz on and Nelson on for Angelino. Uh, Maguire heads the ball away for Manchester United. Out for a throw to Galatasaray uh, on the left. By the way, not only the Football Daily podcast there for you tomorrow morning, latest Fantasy 606 podcast, if you play your fantasy football, was recorded live from Istanbul uh, today. So all the advice ahead of game week 14 there for you, available via the BBC Sounds app with Chris Sutton, who you're here tonight as well at the Emirates Stadium. He's alongside Ian Dennis for our commentary of Arsenal against Lens and Statman Dave uh, on that pod as well. Throw in for Manchester United. Dallow takes it, it bounces over the head of McTominay. Bruno Fernandes wins a header. McTominay tries to control it inside the Galatasaray half. He can't do so. And the ball just bobbles off his feet and goes out of play for a throw in to Galatasaray. So the draw, I, I guess, slightly suits Galatasaray the better because they've got a point more than Manchester United and the fact that United have to play Bayern, Galatasaray away to Copenhagen. Yeah, the they need games. a win. I think they need a win, Manchester United, because I think even Bayern under strength with the quality of their squad will be a very, very difficult game for Manchester United. Yeah. Just to say, Bardacchu has now come across the, to the left-back position. Nelson has gone into that centre-half position. Sasha Bowie wide on the right. Manchester United with some defending to do. Bowie comes in field. Dallow tries to intercept his pass. It runs past him and Zaha. Zaha quickly onto it for Galatasaray. Three step over. Clever stuff. Driven shot straight at Anana. That was a fabulous chance. And he hit it straight at the keeper. Oh, he just so well, Wilfred Zaha. A couple of step overs, opens up the shot down the middle, but side puts it instead of putting his laces through it. Here comes Dallow getting away down the right hand side for Manchester United. Can he find the right ball? Yes, he can. Bruno Fernandes hits oh, the post. Wow. The outside of the post. Fernandes cannot believe it, holds his head in his hands. His goal in the first half was a wonderful strike. That one was pretty good too. Maslera at full stretch couldn't get there. Hits the post and goes behind for the goal kick. Yeah, good play. Again, that pocket of space that he likes to find himself in. Almost hits that dip in knuckleball, as we talked about earlier on. Muslera had no chance of getting anywhere near it. Crashes off the outside of the post. That would have been perfect for Manchester United with five minutes left. Yeah, five minutes to go, plus added time. Galatasaray three, 
Manchester United three. Shaw's header, but no, there was a little push there on Yilmaz. So that is going to be a free kick for Galatasaray, 10 yards inside the Manchester United half. Andre Anana, who has not had his best evening between the sticks for Manchester United, stands waiting on the edge of the six-yard box, but this free kick is going to come from deep. I think it's Akta Koglu, scorer of the third goal, who's going to take it, and Galatasaray, as you'd expect, have thrown plenty forward. In it comes to the edge of the box. Maguire gets up to win the header. Side-footed pass finds Zaha, corner of the Manchester United area, trying to work it onto the right foot this time. The shot is well over the bar, leaning back off balance, got the power, just couldn't keep it down. Yeah, he went for the power this time because of the attempt earlier on with the side foot, and it was just lashed by Zaha, well over the bar, poor attempt by him. Manchester United nearly away down the left there, Stephen Anana played the ball to Luke, so he stretched, couldn't quite control it. Yeah, we're just seeing, starting to see a few tired bodies now, a few tired minds as well. Will it come down to a mistake in this game that settles it? Oh, Akta Koglu might get caught in possession just inside his own half. Now the referee doesn't like the challenge on him from either Anthony or Maguire. Maguire's well out of position here, and Galatasaray have taken the free kick. Akta Koglu drifts past Bruno Fernandes. Tackled by McTominay, this could work for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes centres an opportunity, left-footed pass. Intercepted by Torreira. Felt he was pushed off balance as he made the pass. Fernandes is walking back. Manchester United have got defending to do. Facundo Palistri is doing the covering job at left back here. Here's Yilmaz, the substitute on the turn in his green boots. Plays back to Oliveira. Oliveira, powerful run from him. Up to the edge of the area. Left footed pass looking for Icardi. Icardi didn't have the pace to get there. It goes all the way through to Anana. Uh, I think Icardi knew he's offside. He stopped his run. It wasn't the ball, it wasn't the pass. I think he should have taken the shot on Oliveira. Severe 2, PSV 2 in the Arsenal group. Arsenal longs commentary on the way here on 5 Live this evening. Martial, good skill. Bringing the ball in from the left. Midway inside the Galatasaray half. Luke Shaw in space on the left. First time ball from him to Palistri. Jeers, whistles, boos, anything to try and put Manchester United off. Here's Fernandes, just outside the area, flick from Shaw. Chance possibly for Martial, couldn't get the shot away. Ball falls to Shaw, right-footed effort, that's blocked as well. By Nelson, this time it runs to Palistri. Luke Shaw's down, curling effort from McTominay from the edge of the box, eventually goes wide. Goal kick for Galatasaray, and there's bodies strewn all over this soggy pitch now. Well, I I'm wondering why Martial's not hit it. And Bruno Fernandes is asking him exactly the same question. Why haven't you hit it? It's on your left foot, just put your laces through it. Put, get a shot in at goal. He wants the perfect goal. Uh, Martial, it's just poor, poor centre-forward play from him. Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3. Spontaneous standing ovation around the stadium as Wilfred Zaha leaves the field. Couple of late chances in the game for him and he turns in turn and applauds all four sides of the ground. The German midfielder Kerem Demir Bay comes on for Zaha. Not long left now, 89th minute of the game, 3-3. Manchester United will be hoping that Bayern Munich will beat Copenhagen at home this evening. He and Dennis will keep you across that one during our commentary of Arsenal against Lens. If they do that, Bayern Munich away and clear. You'd have Galatasaray on five points from this draw. Uh, Copenhagen would still be on four. Manchester United would be on four, and that would keep it tight. But if Manchester United could find a late winner somehow, Luke Shaw having to do some defending does really well in the left-back position. Flicks a little pass here to Lindelof. Lindelof brings it away for Manchester United. Good ball as well up towards Palistri. He's got two Galatasaray players breathing down his neck. He's lost it. But he's fouled, and Manchester United get the free kick as we move on into the 89th minute of the game. They take it quickly from deep. What a run by McTominay. Muslera reads it, heads the ball away. Caught, was he? Referee says play on. Muslera picked, he's fine. Look at him, he's rolling around, doesn't get the free kick immediately. He's back on his feet. Here's Oliveira, 30 yards from goal in the inside left channel. Akta Koglu's curling cross, too close to Inanna, he catches it on the bounce. Oh, you can see what he's trying to do, he just knew that Akadi had got across Lindelof and in, in a good position to pin him, tries to feed it in, but the pass isn't quite right. Anthony Martial moving at speed towards the edge of the Galatasaray penalty area, feeds McTominay, McTominay onto Anthony, Anthony finds Dallow, in behind the defence, cross in, hits a couple of defenders, Terreira's there, oh, oh Palistri, how's he missed that? Muslera blocks it, Palistri had... 
the goal at his mercy there from six yards out and Muslera somehow scrambles across and gets in the way it would have been the winner for Manchester United how's he not scored how has he not scored I mean what an opportunity Torreira makes a right mess of it in the six yard box stumbles on the ball tries to clear it kicks it against Palistri and then Palistri doesn't have the composure then to put it into the empty net that is a really poor miss from him Three, has to do better three minutes only three minutes of added time given all the substitutions we've had in the second half I'm surprised it's not more than that it's been an absolutely fabulous game of Champions League football the pitch has stood up to the conditions brilliantly both teams have gone at it Manchester United will kick themselves led 2-0 and 3-1 Andre Anana in particular I think will feel guilty for at least two of the goals if not all three but Manchester United not worrying about that right now. Attacking in the late stages, look at Harry Maguire giving it everything. Can't get on the end of that through ball from Anthony. It ends up in the gloves of Maslera. So, 3-3, two minutes to play. And if it finishes as a draw, Manchester United's fate in this group is out of their own hands. So they could beat Bayern Munich in their final game, but it may not be enough for them to stay in the Champions League. Are we going to get late drama? Ball is headed forward. McTominay keeps chasing. But listen, Lair is just there in time. Racing out. And he's sort of a, one of those De Canio scissor volleys to clear the ball from the edge of the penalty area. Manchester United take their throw quickly. Anthony still looks fresh. Finds Dallow on the right. Dallow trying to get the cross in blocked. Late Manchester United corner. Yeah, take your time. Make sure it's set up properly. Make sure that the quality comes in. Allow Harry Maguire and Lindelof to go and attack the ball. Don't have too much height in the team, so it'll be interesting to see what Manchester United do here. McTominay, Lindelof and Maguire will be the ones who will be looking to attack it. 90 seconds to play. Bruno Fernandes with the corner. No, Torreira heads it away at the near post. Straight back to Fernandes, gets a second chance, chests it down, rolls it back to the 18-year-old Mainu. Mainu's cross comes into the far post, headed away by Bowie. Only as far as Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw looks up. Another cross comes into the Galatasaray. And McTominay's up well. Can't direct the header on target. Goes spinning well wide. And that's another goal kick for Galatasaray. Yeah, the hands on the head tell you everything. He thinks he should do better McTominay in that situation. Catch your breath again. I mean, this is a couple of minutes to go. Can they find a winner, Manchester United? One thing they can't do is concede. That'll be disastrous for them. So, 40 seconds to play. Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3. The rain has eased, the noise has died a little. It's been some night in Istanbul. Muslera sliced his clearance. Manchester United keep the ball in play with the Palistri header. Demir Baez tackled. Throw in, throws it to Oliveira, volleys it forward. Anana comes out to the edge of the box and grabs it for Manchester United. 20 seconds to go. Got to get it forward quickly if they're going to win this game. Bowls it out to Harry Maguire. Maguire's in the right back position. Plays up here to Diogo Dallo. Dallo on the turn, looks to find Anthony on the right. And the referee calls proceedings to a halt. An incredible night in Istanbul. The two teams sharing six goals. Manchester United's fate in this group is now out of their hands. They led 2-0 through a couple of stunners from Garnacho and Fernandez. They were pegged back to 2-1. McTominay made it 3-1. But Galatasaray came back at them and got the draw in the end. Yeah, first and foremost, magnificent game of football. Great to be here. The atmosphere and everything surrounding the game has been exactly what I thought it would be but the game itself Manchester United should win this game mistakes have cost them they were in control of it Anana's let them down I know the players will say it's a team game but he has to do better he's been bought in for big money he's a big game player and he's just not ignited his Manchester United career and they could rue those mistakes in, in, uh, in later, later on in this group. Incredible game of football in Istanbul tonight. It's finished Galatasaray 3, Manchester United 3. Crazy, chaotic, just the kind of game, Mark, you'd have to watch in your underpants. 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Thank goodness, thank goodness that wasn't called off, Stephen Warnock, from an entertainment <laughs> point of view. Uh, it was just brilliant. I mean end-to-end -end basketball game springs to mind doesn't it um, mistakes quality goals but the only thing we didn't get was a VAR intervention incredibly um, so that was it was nice to see that and the, the game of football was just 
uh, quite breathtaking at times but Manchester United will be kicking themselves when they get in that changing room because they should have won this game there's quite a uh, there's quite a lot to unpick from that but if you if you look at the bigger picture which maybe you have to with United at the moment as they try and rebuild themselves if most of this season they they have looked quite toothless and not really played much free-flowing football then actually there are a lot of positives from a United point of view tonight aren't there? Possibly but if you want to advance and you want to get better yeah, but I'm not, I'll, come on up, to, I'll come on to the advancing in a minute but just on, on actually the football they played in an attacking way there are positives yeah, well, I'll hold my hands up before a game. You asked me the question about how did he go about it, and I said, well, I don't see Manchester United being able to control the game. Actually, they did that very well at times. It was when they conceded that they, they sort of went into the shell a little bit, and you're thinking, oh, don't do that, go after them. And when they did play expansive football and open the game up, they got rewarded for it because they created countless opportunities, and that was a positive. I, I totally agree with you on that. But... <laughs> But for, for all of that, yet again, 3-1 up, and they concede two quick goals after that, don't yeah, they? Not, I mean, uh, not, 62nd and 71st, so two goals in 10 minutes. Yeah, not good enough, and uh, you, you look at the goalkeeper and he has to do better. I don't know what your thoughts are on the third goal, but I don't think he should be beaten at the near post. I know it's a, a great strike, but your positioning has to be better you have to be, anticipate that and uh, it should be a wonder goal to beat you in the far post not the near post but Anana's he's let his team down tonight and, and I don't like saying that too often about players because we all have off nights and we have off nights in our jobs and things like that and I've had off, off days in my games as well but you, you've got to do better and away from home in, in a game of this magnitude um, to we, 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 you just touched it on it there about advancing Manchester United as a team he was brought in to advance Manchester United and replace David De Gea mm. I don't see it as an advancement in that area so look he's he's not doing this deliberately and he's no. he's making mistakes and, and he's making mistakes in quite quite a lot uh, Europe in particular it feels like he, he's making a lot of mistakes although he did save a penalty didn't he at, at home to Copenhagen now what, what do they do, rather than hammering him, what do they do about it? Because as a, as a fan watching him, your heart is in your mouth every time the ball goes anywhere near him. Do you think that's going to be the same for his teammates? A little bit. I think there'll be a... I mean, it's interesting. I remember playing a game against... I was at Aston Miller at the time. We played against Manchester United and David De Gea was in his first season and he wasn't playing particularly well, he was struggling. Mm. And I was just stood alongside Wayne Rooney and I said to him, what's he like? He said, he's unbelievable. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah, he said, he's gonna be amazing for us. So that belief was there because they're seeing it every single day in training. We're seeing the small snippets of it in games. So the players will know the true player. It's trying to bring that onto the pitch more often and give him that confidence. And I think if they're seeing that, it won't affect them. But if there's too many mistakes creeping in, it will start to frustrate the players. He, um, look, you're, you're not a goalkeeper. I, I'm not a goalkeeper. Ali's not a goalkeeper. But th th there are some times when, when he tries to make a save, it, there's almost an element of him, of him trying to make it look more, I don't know whether flamboyant's the right word, or I don't, in some ways, he tries to force the ball out harder than maybe he needs to. Do you know what I mean? And I thought that on the for that on the second, second goal, three, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's tried to palm it out, hasn't he? And you think, yeah. just just pick it up or even just kick it. Um, it was a very very strange one. Now I wonder whether just Wan Bissaka across the eye line causes him a problem. But even still, as a goalkeeper, that anticipation, he, he might miss it. I've got to be alive for that. I've got to almost sort of see that happening. Um, but I, I agree with you. I know what you mean. Um, but again, it's just that whether it's a confidence thing, whether it's just a, a lack of belief in what he's doing at the moment. And yeah, he's, he's being punished for big things, isn't he? Yeah, there was a save he made in the derby that was quite similar to that. Where it, from, a, I think it might have been from a, was it from a Harland header or something? Anyhow, where he, t where he tried to push it out with greater force and in the end just pushed it straight up in the air. And 
it, it, just, just I mean, as I say, I'm no goalkeeping expert, but just sometimes you wonder what he's trying to do. And then what do you, what do, you do, though? Do you persevere with him? Oh, he will do. 100% he will. I think it'll be interesting, though, uh, come the African Cup of Nations, whether he does go, because I think there's been talk he won't go. Uh, because he wants to stay and prove himself at Manchester United um, but does he need that break would that break do him well and he builds his confidence going away with Cameroon I'm not so sure I think it'd be a very interesting one but why he's here I think Ten Hag perseveres with him and, and keeps him in goal uh, PSV scored an injury time to win 3-2 in the end in Sevilla so that now takes them to eight points in the group one behind Arsenal, so there's a little bit more on it for Arsenal tonight. Arsenal have nine from four, PSV eight from five, Lons five from four, and Sevilla two from five. The Manchester United group, Bayern 12 from four, Galatasaray five from five, Copenhagen four from four, and Manchester United four from five. So Ali, just doing, just doing the mental maths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for him to get his calculator yeah, out. I know. Yeah, I know. So, if yeah. Bayern were to beat Copenhagen tonight, yeah. then United would have to beat Bayern and hope Copenhagen and Galatasaray draw. Yeah. Is that that's, right? Yeah, that's so basically what what they really don't want tonight Manchester United. In fact, it would knock them out of the Champions League is for yeah. Copenhagen to win away at Bayern. Now we know that is that is unlikely, but, but, I mean, given this group and what we've seen, you never know. Ideally, yes, that's right. They, they want Bayern to beat Copenhagen tonight, and then it'll be pretty much... Well, in fact, it's even better than as you were, because tonight it started 4-4-3. Then, you'd, as you say, you'd have Galatasaray on five, Manchester United and Copenhagen both on four. And yes, it, but it's out of their hands. That's the thing, Mark. Had they won this game tonight and Bayern had beaten Copenhagen, Manchester United would have started that final round of mm. games in second spot in the table and, and it would have been in their control it's it's not in their control anymore and I mean difficult to say what sort of buying performance team we'll see at Old Trafford in a couple of weeks time but I would go back to your initial point and say you know it would be a huge disappointment if, if they do get it knocked out of the Champions League in the group stages particularly given the sort of progress they've made under Ten Hag last season to get to this point to get back in, in the Champions League but that performance tonight the likes of as you said in the first half season, Anthony that's the best I've seen him play yep. for Manchester United McTominay was great so McTominay yeah, yeah. I think the big thing is though from a Bayern Munich point of view do you try and knock Manchester United out do you, you go strong and go well they are a danger so, really? Yeah, but I think it, it could be one of them. And it, it's always nice to knock a big team out the competition as well. Just a final one on, on tonight. I mean, Anana will get an awful an awful lot of the, the blame. Were you surprised at any of the substitutions? Were you surprised at the withdrawal of Hoyland? So, you know, before the hour, Amrabat before the hour when they were, they were, doing, they were doing well at that point? Well, it depends what the the medical department have said sure. and, and and what the advice is being given on those two those two players. It might. I mean, you're also got to take into account the 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 uh, the pitch, and that might have been actually quite heavy on the legs. So it could have been that the pitch. We we haven't been privy to see it. We can't. I mean, from our point up here, our viewpoint, it looks really good. It might be really heavy on the foot when you're running. So that might have caused a few issues as well. There's a few players going down with cramp around about 10 minutes to go. Um, but also, at that point, they were in control of the game, Manchester United. They were very comfortable. Uh, we will leave it there. We shall leave you to go into the Istanbul night in just your underpants as a team. Well, Thank you very much. Oh, yes, sorry. I, I, was just, I was just thinking, Mark, it was a stupid thing to say that because if someone wasn't listening to the start of our programme, they would think, what on earth? <laughs> Does Alistair Bruce Ball watch exciting football in his underpants? Is that a, a what on earth? Do you want to about? explain very quickly? We got absolutely soaked on mm. the way here. Torrential rain all day and our mm. engineer, Owen, his trousers were so wet, he decided actually it would be better to try and dry them uh, on one of the railings behind us in our commentary box. Uh, so sat here for the rest of the evening in his underpants.